Walk around, get upset, walk around. Come on, girl, ride that centaur. Half man, half beast, don't centaur. Come on, girl, ride that centaur. Half man, half beast, don't centaur. Come on, girl, ride that centaur. Half man, half beast, don't centaur. Come on, girl, ride that centaur. Half man, half beast, don't centaur.
to the pitch, getting lost, walk around, get upset, walk around. Come on, girl, ride that centaur. Half man, half beast, don't centaur. Come on, girl, ride that centaur. Half man, half beast, don't centaur. Come on, girl, ride that centaur. Half man, half beast, don't centaur. Come on, girl, ride that centaur. Half man, half beast, don't centaur. Well, 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 uh, how's it going, everybody? Um, welcome to a live, we are live, web reading of 19-ish years after, or there and back again, a Puff's Tale, parts one and three, an unauthorized parody for charity. Uh, my name is Matt Cox. I am the playwright of Puffs and uh, various other things, and you are in my home, uh, and you are all in yours, and so we thought we could all get together and maybe try to make your evenings, uh, this particular evening, just a little bit more fun tonight. So uh, uh, a warm and hearty puff hug, a very safe distance puff, puff hug to all of you watching at home. I do believe that this is enough distance. I sure, certainly hope so. Um, sorry, I'm not used to live streaming, so I have to remember to look right there. So, hi. Um, amazing. So, uh, what is this, you may be wondering? Well, 19-ish years after is... The story that comes after Puffs, uh, it is just 
you know, a fun little parody play uh, that once upon a time, uh, whenever we originally did the show and we were closing at the People's Improv Theater, our first theater back in 2016, which is crazy, um, we happened to, the, the that very final show happened to coincide with the release of a certain script uh, of a certain play. And we thought, well, maybe we should celebrate our little run at the People's Improv Theater and do a reading of a sequel to Puffs and uh, 19-ish years after is what came about from that. Uh, what came about after from about three nights of me just writing from midnight to four in the morning. So keep that in mind whenever you think about what happens in this play. Uh, it came together very fast, but it ended up being a lot of fun. So we've revisited a few times uh, and the story has even maybe continued on a little past that, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, and so tonight is also a very special version of this reading because as it is, it is says in the title, this is a parody for charity. Um, as you can see above me, and as you can see, we've already met the goal. So thank you all so, so, so very much. That's insane. Um, we are raising money for a wonderful organization called Queens Feeds Hospitals, um, which, you know, is a, you can get more information and you can find the donation link below right down there in that general vicinity. Um, and what they do is they both support local restaurants in the borough of Queens in New York, where uh, many of the cast of Puffs, including myself, happen to live and love. In fact, the Puffs of set, many of the props were built in Queens. Um, and so we wanted to figure out some way that we could help with everything going on in the world right now. And so this organization goes to restaurants uh, in our neighborhood, which are also struggling right now, and they buy a large order of food, and then they use that to feed healthcare workers. So we're helping two people at once. We're all helping two people at once. So sincerely, thank you all. Um, let's see how high we can get that number <laughs> because, wow, holy moly. Um, I'm genuinely flabbergasted. So thank you all so much. Uh, if you have a chuckle, if you have a laugh throughout this, please feel free to donate. If you can, no worries. If you're able, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, Awesome. Okay, well, enough from just me. I do have some other friends joining us this evening, um, and I think it's maybe it's about time uh, we said a warm puffs hi to them. So please welcome from California, Miss Julianne Earls. Hello. Yay. <laughs> uh, the world there's people from you're all over the world it's again this is insane to me amazing also we have mr langston belton hello yay Hi. how are you langston good how are you oh good to see you. just doing just fine uh here from my very own home our very own home andy miller <laughs> i was hiding she was hiding <laughs> no, uh and also we have steven stout and madeline bundy Hi. Hello. <laughs> the one, the only, Mr. Nick Carrillo. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Always with an entrance. We have the one, the only, Jesse Canazaro. Hi. Yes. Good to see everyone. <laughs> and together at last, we have Helly Phillips and AJ Diddy. Hi. <laughs> Uh, beautifully dressed, and of course we have the man, the voice himself, Mr. James Foey. Uh. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that great. Sexy voice. Uh, amazing. And you know what? That's all of the characters who are still have someone who's alive at the end of Puffs. That's all of them. Uh, uh, amazing. What? Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers for Puffs. Hopefully you've seen Puffs. If you haven't, well... You can find it somewhere on the internet. <laughs> um, or you know what? Let's We could just do that real quick. Uh, you guys, okay. do you think you could do that? Yeah, we can just do puffs real quick. Um, yeah. uh, amazing. Uh, a few more things before we get started with the reading. Um, if you would like, as we've done this in the past when we've done it live, there is a drinking game element to 19-ish years after. Um, if you are of age to drink, please feel free to have a fun time with us. Um, what you do is uh, anytime the script maybe happens to use, you, anytime you happen to hear the word cursed, which may or may not come up, uh, you just give a loud, ah, and then, uh, you know, you take, you take a little sip. For those not of age, well, um, what's great about this is you can still just scream, and you can scream for an extra amount of time. Uh, and that'll be, honestly, probably more fun. Um, 
Wonderful. <laughs> and at the end of this, if you want to stick around, um, we will be doing a, a short Q&A. Um, if you have any questions you'd like to ask any of us about anything about the show, about the journey, about life, about where you're going, about what you're doing, <laughs> about our houses and how they're set up. And if you'd like to see more of them, um, you can't, you can't. Um, wonderful. Did we lose Langston? Langston, are you still with us? No, my internet was goofy. It's back now. It's okay. All right, everyone. I was getting Live off the device. theater. Live theater. You? Live theater. That, and as, as <laughs> live the this is a, a very different version of live theater, and we're all going to figure it out as we go. And thank you for being on this journey with us. So, uh, without further ado, I believe we're going to begin. So, goodbye, all the other people on this screen. As we here, I'm going to scooch over just a little bit. Great. <laughs> Um, wonderful. So, we begin with 19-ish years after, or there and back again, A Puff's Tale, Parts 1 and 3, an unauthorized parody for charity, written by Matt Cox, based on a story by Matt Cox. Part 1. All which sits on stage is a calendar, a big calendar, for no reason in particular, just in case something should happen where we need to keep track of what day, month, or year it may or may not be. Just in case. Prologue and epilogue, 19 years after. We're on a certain special platform of a certain train station. Children in robes run rampant, excited to go to school, for they have nothing to fear that awaits them there. Or do they? On this platform, an older Megan Jones waits in a leather jacket and glasses. She has not been back here since then. Okay, deep breaths. Being back's not so bad. Everything seems well. Everything is well, right? But we never knew what was waiting us. We thought we were safe when we went to school. Her eyes go wide. She shakes it off. No, no, that's the past. It's different now. The world is different now. 2017, it's better than the mid-90s. Mostly, kind of. I mean, I would never go want to go back to then, that's for it. I mean, surely at this point, they've made the place less dangerous for children, right? Yeah, so you're standing here, you're cool, you're back, and you're fine being back at the train station. Trains trains oh boy let's just keep a low profile stop talking to yourself and hope no one tries to talk to you hannah and clumsy longbottom enter it's megan jones hi hannah longbottom hi how's life me and hannah got married yep you've told me every time i see you you tell me multiple times so happy for you and all your successes, Megan. Now, I'm so sorry, but we have to catch the beverage cart before the rest of the faculty gets there, if you know it. Act dear, dear, please put your shirt back on. <laughs> Clumsy had fully removed his shirt, his muscular abs shining in the light of the sun, just like that. Bye. Me and Hannah got married. They exit as Ernie Mac runs on directly towards Megan. Oh, is that critically acclaimed wizard author, Megan Jones? Or are my eyes playing tricks on me and I'm surrounded by all my old friends again? Even the ones who are gone. An emotional beat. Hi! Hi! Yep, it's me, Ernie. Ah! Susie Bones has appeared directly behind Megan. Susie Bones, I didn't expect to see you right behind me. Or here. Didn't know I'd see either of you. Well, I'm very important here. I conduct the train. Choo choo. <laughs> uh, that's just yeah, that's just a wee bit of train humor to brighten your day. Right. Susie, do you have a job here? For kids? No. I'm just passing through on my everlasting walk. Walking is all I do now. Walking from place to place. Walking just quick enough that death can never catch up. He still stalks me, one step behind. I'll never let him have me, so I must walk. It's nice to have found, have to, it's nice to have found myself here amongst friends. Sometimes I forget what it feels like. Happiness, that is. Well, okay, bye. 
Bye! Very well. They exit as Megan takes a step forward. Blondo ec- enters, lecturing a small blonde child. Now promise me you'll be on your best behavior. That's my boy, young Scorpius. Cape flip. They exit. Megan mouths Scorpius because, well, that is a name. An older Oliver Rivers, mortal genius, wizard, normal person enters, and we see a familiar scene. Holy shit, Megan Longbottom got hot. Also, you are never going to believe what Potter named his new kid. Wait, where's Wayne? Oh, uh, I thought you had him. <sighs> Not this again. Did, you leave, did we leave him at my mom's? Mm. Wayne! 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 Mom! Dad! Wayne Rivers Jones 10, hereby known as Little Wayne, runs on. Mom! Dad! I'm scared to go to school. I'll be honest with you, Wayne. You should be. If it wasn't an evil teacher, it was a giant snake. Or soul-sucking security guards. One year there was a sports tournament. Someone died. I'll be fine. Just remember, through it all, no matter if you're brave or smart or... Snake, snake, snakes, oh baby. <laughs> or a puff. Don't worry too much about it. Let's just put some hat things. And hey, Wayne, what three times four? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, don't worry about that either. Uh, there's no math class. Yeah, still not bitter about that. Just uh, worry about the wizarding. But what if I'm bad at being a wizard? Oh, son, you are, <laughs> you are named after someone who started out as one of the Worst wizards ever. Now, you got a train to catch. Ooh, I like trains! Megan kisses him on the cheek as he runs up. You mum gross. Meg- Megan and Oliver watch as the train immediately departs. Okay, you ready for this? New kid name? Al Severus. <laughs> I can be Scorpius. No. <laughs> oh, man, these people have no idea how to name children. Oh, by the way, did you see Potter? I mean, that new ministry job has him really overworked. Feel bad for the guy. Him and his family. It's like he's cursed. It's like they're all cursed. Children. What are you talking about? I don't know. I haven't been outside in a very long time. Hey, uh, what house do you think he's going to get sorted into? I have a pretty good idea. Seen A certain school of magic and magic. And just like that, we are transported, as if by magic, to a school. A wizard school. A group of children wait in line. Little Wayne amongst them. A very elderly and frail headmaster McGee reads from a parchment. Potter Al. Uh, Harry walks up. And sits down. He reveals a sock puppet on his hand. A talking hat goes on this sock puppet. This sock puppet is Al. A pause until the hat booms. Snake! (gasps) Silence. The room and the internet are shocked. The whispers begin. The kind of whispers that hurt feelings. You know the whispers. Snake? 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 I can hear you. Oh, no. Oh, no! Nobody understands Al! It's okay, Al. I understand. This just means we can stand together. The two smile at one another. They stand very close to each other. Yes, yes, it's all very shocking. But moving on in non-alphabetical order... Rivers Jones Wayne. Music soars as little Wayne, nervous, excited for his future, sits on a stool center. A hat is placed on his head. He looks up expectantly, knowing in just moments he'll finally achieve his dream. His dream of calling himself a puff. Brave! Another silent silence. Oh. Little Wayne just passes out. Scene! Brave Tower! And suddenly we're in a real, we're at a real rager of a party at the Brave Tower. All the Braves fist pump and hoo 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 because, well, being a Brave is awesome. Who's the best? Who's the coolest? Who's got a lot of personal issues to work out in the next seven years and don't care who gets in the way? Rosie walks over to Wayne. She takes after her father and is a mop. Hi. Um, listen. 
I'm Wayne. Uh, I know this might sound crazy, but I don't think I belong here. Like, I'm not supposed to be here. Like, something has gone horribly wrong somewhere. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Sure, I, I guess we can be friends. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, uh, bye, bye, I guess. Scene! Sports practice. And just like that, we're at the sports place. The place where they all play sports. The children are getting ready for their first flying lesson. Wayne psychs himself up. Okay, Wayne. Okay, Wayne. You can fly. You just have to believe you can fly. That you can touch the sky. Believe you can soar. Behind Wayne, Craig has entered. Poor, poor Craig. Hi, my name is Craig. Are you talking to yourself? <laughs> yes, I am. Hi, Craig. Wait, are you waiting for me to say something else? A second sentence? Wow! Oh, boy! Oh, usually people don't let me talk this long. Wow, you wow, wow! This is exciting. Okay, Craig. Oh, K, Craig. Make it a good one. Make a real good impression. Run through that open door. Hey, now you're talking to yourself. <laughs> a silence. Then, laughter. The laughter of the youth. The audience is reinvigorated by this laughter, remembering a time when they too were young, when they laughed as these children laugh now. Jones, right? They say your parents were like some of the coolest puffs ever, and I mean that in a good way. Uh, not to mention, you know, Wayne Hopkins, who you're named after. Oh, so cool! Uh, their names are carved into my favorite chair in the common room. I'll have to show it to you sometimes, that is, if you're into chairs. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm Craig. I'm a puff. Hi! Hi! You're so lucky. I thought I was for sure going to be a puff. Now everyone's talking behind my back about how I'm not. That I'm a brave. I don't think anyone's doing that. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I better get back to class. Uh, sometimes I just like walking outside around the sports place. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so many sentences. <laughs> a conversation. <laughs> Oh, you're my best friend ever, Wayne. It's best friend. Best friend? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> they hug. Bye. Craig exits. Wayne smiles after him. Scorpius enters and sulks right next to Wayne. Oh, uh, hello. You're Scorpius, right? Am I pronouncing that correctly? I know where this is going. You're going to call me names. You're going to mock me because of the rumours of who my father really is. Well, you do kind of bring it up a lot. The rumours aren't true. The Dark Lord isn't my father. A silence. A deep silence. A hurt silence. You know, um, there's rumours that my mum travelled back in time and that my real father is actually a different timeline version of my father, where robots rule the world and everyone has oranges for heads. Really? No, I was just trying to relate. Friends? Al enters and looks to Scorpius. Hey, Scorpius. Hey, Al. How's it going? Troubled? Cursed? You? I'm fine. Let's get out of here. Okay. They exit. Wayne goes back to trying to fly, when all of a sudden, a broomstick zooms through the air and collides through Lil Wayne's head. He, he falls to the ground. Scorpius pops back out. Look out, there's a boo. Oh. What? It's nothing. 
Just like the rumors. The two exit as Wayne's body twitches. Scene! A wizard hospital! And just like that, we're in a hospital waiting room. Megan paces back and forth. Oliver runs on. About time! You realize our weird son is in critical condition here, right? I'm, I'm so sorry, but being the official math magician, rocket scientist of the magic ministry, I can't just up and walk away. I have a lot of responsibilities. And what is it you actually do there? I do not know. I still have no idea what's expected of me or who my boss is. So if you must know, yes, I just spent two hours asking every single person I could find if I could leave early, hoping that someone would give me any kind of permission, and no one did. I was a little guy. They said he's not going to make it. Oh. Oh, my wizard god. Ha! Just kidding. They haven't told me anything, actually, so I don't know. What? This is how I cope, Oliver. The school's supposed to be safe now. A random witch walks up to Megan. Hi, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but you're Megan Jones, the critically acclaimed wizard author, right? Yep, that's me. Would you mind signing a book for me? Here? In the emergency section of the hospital? Could you make it out to Grumsmorcha? That's me, Grumsmorcha. Megan takes a book from Grumsmorcha, this character. Spelled with two T's? Oh, I really loved your last few books. The Talking Wizard Lion, Aslan, The Witch, and Her Turkish Treats. That overly religious wardrobe. I just can't imagine how you come up with these ideas. Yep, bye. Grumsmorcha, everyone's favorite witch, takes her book and exits. You think they're ever going to figure out you're just copying my old books and adding a few wizard words to them? No, I sincerely do not think they will. A witch doctor enters. A witch that is a doctor. Miss Jones, Mr. Rivers, I'm a witch doctor, not that kind. <laughs> Finally, how is he doing? Who? Our son, Wayne. Wayne. The kid with the broomstick through his head. Uh, the boy with the horrific deadly head injury. Mm, he's fine. Well, he's mostly fine. Um, you should probably follow me to my office, or... They wave their wand, a pause, and then a loud, loud crash. Hey! Because all of the office furniture has burst through the wall behind them and arranged itself as an office right there. I can bring the office to you. Welcome to my office. It was five feet away. We could have walked. Oh, you may want to sit down for this. Crash, 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 crash. Chairs fly towards them. So many chairs. They choose to and sit. Um, now when I say he's mostly fine, you see what I mean is that he isn't necessarily completely fine. Uh, shall we begin with a discussion of our personal definitions of the state of fine? You look confused. Is it about the word fine? I hate wizards. I hate witches. I hate them and how complicated everything always has to be. Maybe you just tell us what is not fine with him. <laughs> how about we start there? Hmm. Unconventional, but uh, I'll try anything. I am a witch doctor after all. Not oh, that kind. <laughs> oh, oh uh, my god. Oh my god. So, your son has suffered a bit of what we witch uh, doctors, <laughs> not that kind, uh, call a severe brain damage. Um, it's nothing too serious. We use this thing called magic to fix him right up and he will be exactly as he was before uh, mostly this is where the mostly comes in see it would appear the bump through the old noggin might have displaced your son time spunker his <laughs> ass hole <laughs> no 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 his his time sh sh shrunker time <laughs> shrunker so you're saying it like we should know what that means, but I'm still thinking ass. <laughs> everyone has a time shunter. It's that part of your brain that keeps us grounded in our own current reality. So what does this mean for your son in his life? Well, probably nothing. <laughs> There's probably nothing to worry about, probably. Unless someone should miraculously and unexpectedly start meddling with time and all willy-nilly begin causing damage to our current timeline on some sort of noble mission or a series of hijinks. 
Okay, little Wayne will experience shifts in reality. He will become lost in time, traveling to whatever new reality has been made. He will be imprisoned in that new world where not a soul knows the true him, and he knows not one true soul. He will despair. This is his curse. He is cursed. He is a child, and he is cursed. But I'm sure none of that will happen. You know, all the time crystals were destroyed a long time ago, so that definitely, probably, most likely won't happen, ever. Otherwise, the only potential side effect as, is as he gets older, he might find himself reliving key moments of the past. You know, his own history, perhaps the history of those close to him. He might say something about loud, you know, vividly, just imagine it. Could make for a fun night of entertainment. Uh, okay, I guess it could be worse. Yeah, we just have to hope no one, like our good pal, Mr. Potter, doesn't, you know, uh, randomly find a time thingy and screw everything up. <laughs> uh, oh no. uh, a silence. A fearful silence. The two look to each other. By the way, Miss Jones, I love your book about that dinosaur theme park for wizards. Scene! End of year one, back at home. Wayne, a bandage around his head, enters. It is the end of his first year of magic school. He is arriving back home. Oh, wow, so fun! What else happened this year at school? On Christmas, I saw a bunch of my friends, and I said, Happy Christmas! And they said... Happy Christmas back to me. And then later on Valentine's Day, my best friend Craig gave me a fancy quill and it was cool and I loved it. But later he had to ask for it back because the person it belonged to wanted it back. And there were no trolls, no long dead evil wizards came back, no oversized chess games. No, it was pretty okay. Except, you know, the whole being a cool and popular brave thing. A moment of deep sadness and hurt from Wayne. He looks to a puff flag hung on their wall. A single tear rolls down his cheek. Hey now, it's okay. Consider yourself lucky. You broke a family curse, which means you're definitely not cursed. Wayne now holds this yellow puff flag in his hands. He's hugging it very tightly. You know what I think it's time for? Oh, oh, is it bed? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm off to bed! Wayne runs off to everyone's That's favorite thing. That's where the dreams live! <laughs> it... So, there we go. Nothing to worry about. That's school. Perfectly safe now. I am 82.5% sure. No trauma to be found. Ah, <sighs> what a relief. The two who are definitely standing in the same room as each other embrace. It's very sweet. Maybe we start thinking about sending another kid there, huh? I, All right. We're in the window, come on. <laughs> I think one's enough. She kisses him lightly, blackout. Scene, the second year. And suddenly, we're at the train platform. Wayne is packed and ready to go. He hugs his mother and father and jumps on board the train. He yells out from a window. Bye! All right, every day, and I'll try not to die and avoid stress, just like you said! That's all we ask, and hey, Wayne, what's 10 plus 2? Sorry, no idea! <laughs> Bye! Stay away from diaries, or any book that starts talking to you. Or books, just, just avoid those, avoid those books. Blondo Malfoy enters. He has a goatee now, which tells us a lot. He <laughs> runs right into Megan. Oh, excuse you. Rumors about my son are unfounded. They are not true. All the little children make fun of my boy. Hey, yo, Blondo. You gotta stop bringing it up all the time. I would forget about it if you didn't always talk about it. Yeah, well, it's not true. And now my wife, dear Sunny Side, she isn't doing so well. Hey, Kai, you are giving so much information. We personally barely know you. Well, no, two things. One, it isn't easy being Blondo Malfoy. And two, the rumors? Not true. Blondo exits. Scorpius walks on. Scorpius holds a trunk, and it's just full of hopes and dreams. He looks out, hopeful to the audience. Scorpius exits. 
Man, these wizard people. Oliver and Megan exit. Scene! Potions class, year two. Wayne is sitting next to Rosie the Mop. Hey, Rosie. Congrats on making the sports team. I'm also fulfilling all my goals. I'm still alive and happy about it. And through a door, a new potions teacher enters. His name, Zach Smith. <laughs> All right, you little buttholes. Zach Smith here, here to teach you kids some bow, 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 chicka, bow, bow, potions, some chemistry. I'm talking meeting some hot ladies. Uh, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Grab your beakers. Not that one, you little freak. Yeah, you stupid, horny little idiots. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know what you're going for. Yeah, I know I shouldn't be talking to 11 year olds like that, but I am. And you can't do anything about it because you are children and I am an adult. I'm a man with a beard now. Yeah. Oh, what? How was my summer, you ask? Well, let me tell you, my parents kicked me out and said I can't be bumming around and I got to make something of myself. So they sent me over to my aunt and uncles. They live in Oklahoma, Oklahoma, America. I don't know if you've heard of it. And I got a job there. I got a job working at the Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park. I worked for a guy named Joe. He was cool as shit. He was the best. I got to mess around with tigers all the time and feed them. We ate old meat from Walmart. Old meat from Walmart's the best. I got to go in this truck full of meat and pick out what I liked and I ate it. And we had this rivalry with this woman named Carol Baskins who killed her husband. I saw it, she killed her husband. I saw it, I witnessed it happen. I saw it all, I can't tell anybody. Don't even ask me about it. Anyways, I was there, we were hanging out. It was the best time of my life, but it took a turn. I'm pretty sure that I'm married to three other men, <laughs> which is okay. You marry whoever you want. I don't care. Whoever you love, but you make sure you marry out of love and not because somebody promises you tigers and other things that Zach Smith can't talk about right now. But I'm, I'm in a marriage that I don't think I agree with, but I have tigers. I have four tigers that I'm breeding right now and some monkeys, a couple of ligers, a monkey tiger braid that I'm doing. It's a thing. It's a thing that I'm happening. Make smart choices, all right? And Walmart meat, old Walmart meat is the best. All right. Let's make some potions or whatever. You put, I don't know, put some put some of your liquid in and then add that special ingredient. You know what I'm talking about. You know where this is going. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't a wand. Through the door, Weird. the actual potions teacher of this class enters the room. Excuse me. Who are you? Oh, me? I'm just the janitor. Don't worry about me. Have fun class, kids. <laughs> Zach! Zach Smith. Zach Smith pulls out a broom and for a good long moment just sweeps up the mess he made, most likely involving Walmart meat. He cries a little. He exits. A student in the back raises her hand. Um, will any of that be on the test? Scene. Year two, done. And just like that, Wayne is back at home with Megan and Oliver. And, and there were no giant snakes? No, no, not one child was abducted. Nope, nope. No spider armies? No, no, no. No, no spider armies? <laughs> <laughs> well, another good year. How's your new book coming, Mom? Get this. It's about four witches, four women, and they're all little. Little witch women. Not even trying anymore. No. Nope. Oliver, you figure out what you're supposed to be doing at your ministry job yet? No, I have not. A silence and then laughter. A family <laughs> <laughs> laughing <laughs> together. Oh. <Aww. laughs> Scene! Now it's year three. We're back at the train station with Lil Wayne, Megan, and Oliver. Have fun at school. Here's your field trip form. Don't drink too much. You're 13. Bye. Megan and Oliver exit as Craig enters. 
Hi, best friend. Hug. And second hug. <laughs> now drink this butter beverage. Oh, we're drunk. Yay. Well, it's the end of the year. Bye, best friend. Wayne and Craig hug again as Megan and Oliver enter. So, year three, no murders. No soul-sucking monsters, no werewolf teachers. No time travel. No, no, and no. Xavier Jones, formerly evil, now just a grandmother, walks on in a frilly robe. Who wants cookies? Ooh, Grandma Xavier, me! I want cookies! I, I also want cookies. Well, funny story, I tried to make some, and they were bad. So then I went and bought some at the store, and they were good. But I left them at the store. So the end of the story is we don't have any cookies. And, well, I guess that's just life. They all laugh. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> Oliver's parents show up, and they laugh too. Their heads, still oranges. Grandma and Grandpa Rivers! <laughs> Laughter again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm ready to say it. I'm now 99.9992311% officially sure nothing bad or crazy is ever going to happen at that school or in our world of witches ever again. No one is cursed. Maybe I'll reapply. I know. I can't wait for year four. <laughs> they laugh as a family, a family unaware of what is coming <sighs> scene the end of year four and suddenly just like that we jump forward in time far forward the on-stage calendars pages fall all across the stage off one by one until we see we are one year in the future one whole year we hear a whispery voice one year later the end of year four so whispery. We're still now in Megan and Oliver's living room, only now there is no laughter. Little Wayne enters first, his clothes tattered. We can tell he just went through some serious stuff this year. His body shakes, he sits on a couch. Megan Jones enters next, her hair disheveled, her clothes torn. She is pissed. She sits slowly next to Wayne. Finally, Oliver enters, covered in dust, dirt, and so much blood. He cries. He holds a torn up piece of paper in his hands. A long, long, long silence. Finally. So, year four, not so good. Nope. Nope. I think we, uh, we had a fine year. Mostly fine year, except the mostly part being some some serious shit we all had, we all just went through, and maybe we we, we leave it at that. Yep. Yep. A silence. Then Megan snaps. <laughs> we can never escape it. We won't ever escape people like them. Everything will be fine and wonderful, but then we all get caught up in someone's big freaking adventure and all have to deal with the consequences. It's like they don't remember that whatever little thing they do might affect everyone. They just don't care. Well, screw that. We all know there's only one person we can blame for everything. One person who caused this all to happen. One person. Potter. Potter. End. Part one. Part two. Welcome back, everyone. That was part one. And now uh, is everyone here ready for part two? Okay, great. Here we go. Part two. There is no part two. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Great. Thank I you. Know that. Open. Part three, scene, the wizard world's greatest detective. 
The calendar reforms. Pages are added back on. And suddenly, just like that, we know that we are back one year earlier, the beginning of year four, where all of part three takes place. And then, darkness. In the wizard criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. The wizards who investigate crime, and then the people who take the probable criminals to a terrifying wizard prison for their souls to be removed from their bodies. These are their stories. Bum bum. Words appear. Law and order. Magical. What, what you just saw. Lights up on a crime scene. An office. In the room, a desk. Yellow wizard crime tape is strewn about everywhere with seemingly no rhyme or reason. Wizard officials take photographs, detectives dust for prints, you know, detective stuff. These two wizards, however, well, they speak with thick, authentic New York accents. Like, listen, everyone, these accents that you are about to hear are, I live here, and I've never heard a better New York accent than what you're about to hear. These people also live here, and so, you know, they have a lot of experience, but these are classically trained New York accents that you are about to hear from these actors let's hear it hey y'all uh, some nasty business must have uh, went down here right <laughs> yeah worst of all they ain't caught the ringleader yet he's still out there committing all kinds of kinds of crime probably blue town last night first chance he got wizard crime man it never ends spend a life looking at scenes like this it'll drive you mad i'm happy today is my last day as of 10 minutes from now i am officially retired where i will return to my home where i've always lived in new york city hey what's this box is it a present this born and raised new yorker spots a gift wrap box wait wait no 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 don't open that up it's too late. This wizard, this New York wizard, rapidly ages, shrivels, and dies. The dust that was them blows away in the wind. The other wizard cop holds the dust in their hands. It. He was right. Wizard crime. It never ends. And suddenly through a door, a savior enters. His name? Harry. The wizards taking photos of the crime scene turn and take so many photos of Harry. Yes, thank you, thank you, it's me, Harry, hero of all wizards, thank you. Uh, Harry signs several autographs. He also, not paying attention, signs the chest of this grieving cop wizard who just lost their dear New York friend. Dust still in their hands. Someone tell me what we got here. Ice T, wizard detective, enters. This is the man named Naughty's office. Notice it's in the bad part of the alley. Surprise, surprise. Long time death buddy, long time lawbreaker, forever scumbag. Rumor is he's the illegal time twisting devices. You know what they say about rumors? They always true. Checks out. There's time residue all over this place. Well then I guess it's time we stopped him and found this twister device. You're right. It is. Boy, what a long day. Anyone else having a long day? I sure am. I am having a rough go of it in life right now. Yeesh. Don't ask me to go on about my life. Everyone in the room acknowledges this, but they go on about their business. Harry continues. I got family troubles. See, got a real asshole of a third kid. And I've been having these dreams. Weird dreams. And at the end of each one, a whispery voice whispers my name, and I know it's a voice I recognize. It's all like... <sighs> but I just can't put, on, put my finger on whose voice it is. It's real whispery. I don't know. Makes for some tired long days. But that's the price you pay when you're the World of Wizards' greatest detective. Right. So, where you think he's keeping the time twisters? I don't know. Check a desk or something. Suddenly, one of the wizards in the room drops his camera and removes a false beard. This is naughty. No, damn it, you got me. You figured me out, Potter. I surrender. I'll go quietly. Expelladomus! Naughty's wand is thrown away. 
And he is knocked out unconscious. Oh, uh, stupid boy! <laughs> and Harry just keeps going, violently throwing Naughty against a wall, who finally passes out. I did it. I stopped another dangerous criminal. Someone take him away to Whispers immediately, where he'll be spending a lot of time on the inside. Stay hey, Potter. Come look at this. Ice T removes a time twisting device from the desk. Harry, still holding his glasses, squints. What could it be? It's so blurry. It's a time twisting device, man. Ah, oh, the twister. I'll be taking that. Looks like another case is solved by Harry, the man who lived. The minister will want to see this. I suppose it's time I get back and show her. Harry goes to put his glasses back on and hits himself very hard in the face, causing a very large cut across his cheek. Oh, oh, oh. Scene! The Department of Rocket Science and Math Magishery. And just like that, we're in an office. That very same day. It's Oliver's office. Oliver sits at a desk. An empty desk. He's doing no work. He's just sitting at a desk. This is what he has done every day for the last 15 years. He asks himself aloud the very same question he has asked himself every day for 15 years. What do I, what do, I do here? Suddenly, magically, a door opens. A very official wizard official enters. Oliver scrambles to grab a quill and just writes on the desk itself. Rivers? Uh, uh, ma'am, ma'am, hi, just doing some... Some work, working hard, working very, very hard, is so hard as I always do. Indeed you are, and we've noticed, Rivers. Your top-notch hard work is why I'm here. We want to offer you a promotion. What? Why? Well, uh, where? We want to transfer you to the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. Oh, that sounds like a place with clear expectations, but also the danger? Yes to both. In fact, where we're placing you, you'll be working right under Mr. Potter himself as his assistant. And we have your first assignment already, an important one. If you fail this, you're through here. Understood? Okay, we need you to get Potter to sign this one single form. He loves signing things. Should be very easy. All right, thank you for your hard work, Mr. Rivers. See you around. This official exits. Oliver looks to the form in terror. Oh. Oh, no. Scene. Megan and the minister. Another room in the wizard government. Building. <laughs> Megan sits in a waiting room. Then that very same wizard official enters. Jones. Listen, whatever it is, I, I didn't do it. All right, there you are. No, 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 Miss Jones. You see, we here are all big fans of your books. That Atticus Finch is one great wizard lawyer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, made him up myself. Indeed you did. And you know, we're such big fans that when we were putting together the list of who should write the first biography on our current minister, Hermione, we will figure that out one day, yours was the only name that we considered. We will not take no for an answer because no one would say no unless there was some kind of a fraud. <laughs> Here's a badge, all right? It gives you full clearance to do everything going on. Your job is to shadow her for the next few weeks while you write the book, take notes on the day-to-day -day operations, all right? All right, good luck. A writer as talented as you should have no problem at all. Oh, almost forgot. Here's your advance. <sighs> Bye. The wizard official exits. Crap. Scene! The summer before school. Wayne and Craig. Wayne is sitting in his bed at home. He writes a letter to Craig. And so, to wrap things up, um, I definitely think things might have worked out better in the battle for the school if everyone just loved each other. 
and then everyone would be protected by love and no one could ever die. Right? See you super soon. I hope. Wayne. Wayne takes the letter and he throws it out his window. Craig receives the letter. <laughs> Dear Wayne, I agree with you about everything, as always. You know, the other night I started thinking, have you ever wondered what the world might be like if Cedric never died? Me neither. <laughs> Your best, best, best friend, Craig. P.S. Good night. Craig disappears after handing his note off. Magic. Wayne takes the note and he holds it to his heart, just so full of joy. He lays down, clutching the note, and falls asleep. Scene! Harry's life! Harry enters. He stands. Cedric's dad Harry. and so many others enter. Harry, I need you to help my boy. No! Harry, I need you to dispel these rumors everyone is talking about, about my son's true parentage. No! Oliver enters, form in hand. Harry, hey, hey, if you could just sign this form for me, that would be pretty fantastic. No! Scene! Harry's house. And we're suddenly inside Harry's home. Harry looks into a mirror at himself. Then, Ginny, his loving and quiet wife, enters. Harry, honey, I noticed you got two of our kids' presents for going back to school, which is a weird thing you do, but I accept it. But I think you forgot a present for Al. Which one is Al again? He's the asshole one. Oh, the asshole one. I know him. Okay. Ah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Bye, wife! Oh, okay, I guess I can go. She exits. Al, get in here! Al, I got a present for you. Here, have a blanket. A blanket? Yeah, it's a baby blanket. Well, what am I supposed to do with a baby blanket? Do what I do. Sometimes use it for warmth, sometimes glance at it fondly, sometimes cry into it, sometimes remember. I wish you weren't my dad! Oh yeah, you asshole kid? Yeah, I wish there was no Harry. Ginny re-enters with Oliver. Harry, someone is here to see you from work? Harry, hey, don't know oh, what- I wish you weren't my son! Yeah, take that! I wish there was a timeline where you were never born! You're cursed! You, a child who's cursed, you're a child who is cursed. You're busy, I'll come back. Oliver exits in haste. Suddenly, Harry grabs his forehead. Ah, my scar, ow! Scene, whiz government. We're in a very expensive set. The minister of all magic, Hermione, stands in front of a crowd of people along with Harry, Ginny, and Ron, the mop. Amongst the crowd, Megan and Oliver, Megan tries to take notes. Honestly, everyone, it's just Harry's skull hurt again. <gasps> no! What? No! 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 What? no! No! Megan and Oliver look to each other. A familiar feeling is sinking in. And that is the end of this very expensive scene. Scene. The train. Wayne is walking along the train, choo-choo-chewing on its way to school. He pokes his head into a compartment where Scorp yus and Al are hugging. Al, we've been hugging for five whole minutes. Okay, we can stop. Hey, Scorpy, what do you remember about the Three Wizard Tournament? You know I love the topic of history. Do you ever wonder what if things happened differently back then? I love where this is going. Jump off this train with me? In an instant! Their faces linger, and then they jump off the train. Ugh. Wayne shrugs and continues along to his own seat. He waves to friends and casual acquaintances alike. Friends who just want to live their lives and not be erased from existence. Eventually, he sits. Uh, hmm. What kind of candy... Should I get from the trolley this time? A loud footstep. The lights on the train flicker. Another footstep. Wayne hears commotion above his head. He looks up. Louder footsteps from outside the hallway. 
Wayne opens the door. Candy? He reveals a witch who works a trolley, only now she is a Terminator, and she has long, long, long spikes for hands, and she looks as terrifying as you see right now. <laughs> she holds up a picture of Al. Have you seen this boy? <laughs> Scene. The government outside a meeting room. Oliver is pacing outside of a meeting room where Harry, Ron, Ginny, Blondo, and Hermione are having a meeting. He still holds an unsigned form. He practices. Harry, hi, good to see you. My assignment for me is the only job I've ever been given at my job. Megan exits the meeting room exasperated. And she's not muted. These people are exhausted. They keep on muting me and I have to put my sound back on. Magic. Apparently now their kids are missing. Which, yeah, that sucks, but then it's off to some other thing happening, and we're chasing that now, and 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 who knows what happens next? They clone themselves. I don't know. I feel like they're just not aware that this is what they always do, what they did then. It's all happening again now, and Harry kind of sounds like a bad parent, if you ask me. Not judging, but judging. Well, how's the biography going? So far, I have... <clears throat> Hermione is the minister now. The end? You are not qualified for this. I'm not! From inside the room, we hear Blondo and Ginny. My son is missing! So is mine! Yep, okay, I, I can't handle this anymore. Let's go home. But the form! I'm sure it can wait. Bye, Harry, Ron, Hermione, others. They begin to leave, they walk, and they immediately pass Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Harry, Ron, Hermione. Wait, clones? No, no, we're not getting involved in whatever this is. The two run off, and nothing bad will probably happen because of this choice they've made. Scene! A certain school of magic. Meanwhile, at school, where all children are supposed to be, Wayne is sitting and talking to Rosie, the mop. So, Rosie, how's your year been? Uh, yeah, mine's fine, too. Kind of a weird start, but... Oh, that's so nice of you to say. You're a really good friend, too, Rosie. I don't know what I'd do without you, really. You're the only part about being a brave I really like because I get to see you and talk to you and you exist. Slam. All of a sudden, reality itself shifts because somewhere a group of young friends meddle with a timeline. Wayne grabs his head in pain. In a poof of smoke, Rosie the Mop has vanished into thin air. She has never even existed. Wayne looks around the stage. Rosie? Rosie? Al enters. Oh, hi, Wayne. Uh, hi. Um, have you seen Rosie somewhere? Rosie? That's not a name. That's a flower. Your funny friend. B but we're not friends. You've never even spoken to me. <laughs> That's funny, my best friend. Hermione enters. She's a teacher in this new timeline we are in, and she is mean. Mr. Rivers Jones, you are late to my class. One million points from the Braves. I'm a mean teacher, and I never married Ron, and that made me mean. What is going on? Wayne runs away. All of a sudden, Al passes out as his alternate reality self takes over. You know, how it goes. Scene! The headmaster's office. We skip to a few days later in a now different timeline, the normal timeline, after several events have transpired, including Harry, who's become incre incredibly suspicious of his asshole child's choice of friends. Yeah, you get it. A very elderly McGee hobbles to her desk. She arranges some flowers. We witness a kind old woman just enjoying her night. Slam! Harry bursts into the room, Ginny sheepishly entering behind him. It's me, Harry! Mr. Potter, I... Uh... You listen, lady. This is how it's going to be. My kid and this Scorpius kid are not going to be friends. And you are going to make sure about it, Terry. Uh, uh, 
Mr. Potter, I, I, I just don't think that's a part of my job. I, I'm a head mask. I'm... You... Terry, I think maybe we should just go back home and... See you too, wifey. Oliver enters the room. Harry, how about that? Yes, we can see you here. How about sign this one form? Yeah, you listen, old lady. A horseman told me there's a cloud around my kid, so that means he can't hang out with any cursed children. And if we order him not to do that, then he'll comply with all rules, just like I always did. Listen, this is what the horse said, okay? You know what? I'll catch you later. Oliver exits. Harry, you're being very year five right now. No, I'm not. You are. Please just stop yelling at me. Hey. No. End this scene. Scene. Emotion on stairs. Little Wayne, his head in pain, his life confused. He's not sure what has happened to reality, so he stands on some stairs. But the stairs begin to move. He tries to go one way. The stairs move. He tries to go a different way. The stairs move. He tries one more time. They move. Wayne breaks down on these stairs and he cries. Then suddenly, a strike of lightning. Time again warps around unsuspecting Wayne. Somewhere, again, someone, unbeknownst to us, has meddled with the past. We arrive in a new timeline, but this one will. Wayne has found himself in a very dark timeline. Everyone is very pale. Everyone has snarls on their faces. Everyone wears only black. Wayne grabs a passing student. Uh, excuse me. Um, what year is it? Uh, what <laughs> day is it even? <laughs> what day is it? Don't you know? It's the day of the Dark Lord. <laughs> and suddenly, a man in a fancy chair appears. He spins around. His is a familiar face, a familiar, pale, noseless face that was supposed to have died 22 years ago. And he unmutes his mic and he says the line again. Happy New Day. Worth it. Death buddies appear all around him. The Dark Lord, the Dark Lord. Ooh. The Dark Lord. The Dark Lord. The Dark Lord. The Dark Lord. No! Dark Lord. <laughs> the evil student grabs Little Wayne. <laughs> My question to you is, who are you taking to the ball of blood? <laughs> oh. The end of part three. Part four, surprise, there are four parts. We open now on Wayne in the darkest timeline one could have ever imagined where darkness and dark lords reign supreme. He's wandered around here for a few hours. He's been horrified of literally every single thing he's seen. However, he is still in school and he is a good student, so he is attending his classes. He looks to the clearly evil children surrounding him in this classroom. Um, hi. I'm Wayne, and I assume you know that because it's a normal day, like always. And, like always, can you tell me your names? Of course we can. I am Azizia Lucifer. I'm Dora Shadow Murder. As moldy as Hellfire. My name is Satan Brimstone of the long line of the Brimstone family. Doom, doom, doom! <laughs> and I'm Greg Patterson. Oh, what cool names. I think I feel most comfortable talking to you, though, Greg. Don't you dare talk to Greg Patterson. He'll kill you. Oh, it's true. I'll kill you. Noted. Sorry. Um, what? class is this anyway and suddenly a certain dead but not dead greasy haired potions teacher enters welcome class to potions class vala bolde magulis vala bolde bolde magulis excellent now since today is of course everyone's 
favorite holiday, Voldy Day. Wayne raises a hand. I'm sorry, but what is Voldy Day? And how did it come to exist? <coughs> hmm. Suddenly a flashback where we see Mr. Voldy sitting in his throne chair. And we can hear him because he's not muted. Yes. So, now that I'm finally in charge of the world, I think I deserve a day that's all about me. We'll call it Voldy Day. And it's today. In the morning, all the little witches and wizards will run downstairs to their Voldy tree and open their Voldy presents while Dad plucks a Voldy cowl on the family piano. Then they'll go to Voldy Park, where we'll have free Voldy-shaped ice cream pops and Voldy t-shirts, and all the children will play Voldy ball and fly their Voldy kites and hunt down all the Voldy eggs. Then, in the evening, we all do Pilates. Yeah. A death buddy enters. Uh, right. Sounds wonderful, sir. I am, however, just wondering, are we still going to kill all the regular non-magical people and insubordinate wizards? You know, like you said, we was going to do all this time in your rise to power. Oh, don't make me work right now. It's Voldy Day. End of this flashback. We're back in potions class. Uh, also, aren't you dead after being discovered you were a double agent working against the Dark Lord and you loved Harry's mum? Lala, I don't know where you possibly heard any of that. Potions teacher elaborately winks at Wayne. Just like that. Aren't you that Rivers Jones boy? Aren't you wanted by the government? Ah, uh, no. I have to. Bathroom. Wayne swiftly exits this class. Seeing a hallway, Wayne is frantically running down a dark hallway until he hears a name that stops him in his tracks. Look! It's the Scorpion King! The Rock is here? Wayne looks around excitedly. He is disappointed to only find a very confused Scorpius. Yeah, uh, I'm the Scorpion King. Where's my friend Al? We're just friends, really. Ballet of Alder Magoulis, Scorpion King. You ready to murder people tomorrow? Because that's what we do every Tuesday for fun. Well, uh, sure. Yeah. But first you must tell us who are you taking to the Ball of Blood Dance? Well, uh, sure, yeah. Uh, excuse me, um, sorry to interrupt, but I have to ask, who decided on the Ball of Blood for a name of a dance? Well... And we flash back again to a man in a chair. All right, so... The kids are all going to have a dance at the school because no matter who's in charge, everyone loves a good dance. Now, I know I shouldn't get involved, but I want to. So let's talk names. Just going to throw a few out there. I've been working on the Skeleton Jamboree. No. The Curse of the Cotillion. No. The Spooky Boogie. <laughs> no. mm. <clears throat> well, I'm sure I'll think of something eventually. And that is the end of that flashback. Uh, anyways, I have to go talk to my dad, who's definitely not the Dark Lord. Oh, I wish he was my dad. Me too. He'd be the best dad ever. Dark Lord Dad. Dark Lord Dad. Oh. He's not my father. Scorpia storms off as these two evil students turn towards Wayne. 
scorpion is acting weird. Makes me want to torture someone to restore normality in our lives. Hey, ain't you one of them traitors, kids? <gasps> Lock him in the school's torture dungeon. Hello. The two students yeah. carry Wayne off screaming, scene, the torture room. Here, we watch a montage of Wayne surrounded by other harmless regular kids just chained up to a wall and being tortured. This scene happens for a few real-time days. This scene is 72 hours long. Wow. Wayne cries, alone, afraid, tortured for 72 hours. Scene, still the torture room. It's night. Chains rattle as a cloaked figure releases Wayne from his bindings. Wayne is a bit delirious, and so is likely the actor who has not been fed for days. What? Why? Who? Who are you? Uh, hey, this figure removes his hood. It's someone we know. It's Cedric. Cedric? You're alive? Indeed. It's Cedric, and he's alive. Well, are you here to save me? No. You must be. I'm not. Cedric punches Wayne. Oh! Did I mention that Cedric is now evil because losing the tournament in a different timeline made him evil? Huh. Cedric. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. My name now is Sevil. Is that... Is that Cedric and the word evil combined? <laughs> yes. Now, to take care of you like I took care of Longbottom and his abs. I've been meaning to kill someone else eventually. But you're... Cedric. You're supposed to be a hero. More death buddies appear. All around Wayne. I am a hero. Vala Volimogulis. And also... Avadaka! Spells! Suddenly, from elsewhere, a spell explodes. Sevil is knocked to the ground. Oh, no. It's him! A strike of lightning, silhouetted, standing in this hallway, his shadow cast 50 feet tall on the wall behind him, dressed all in black, armed with two wands, fully bearded, and every inch the real hero of this story is an alive Wayne, adult, badass Wayne Hopkins. He dispatches all the yeah. death buddies. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, he knocks away Sevil. Yeah. He blows the smoke that's definitely coming out of his wands. You know, once upon a different time, he taught me everything I knew. Guess he taught me a bit too much. We'll send the Death Buds after us now. Wayne Jr., come with me if you want to live. Awesome. Right. Scene. A secret hiding place. Badass Wayne seals the door behind him using a very fancy, very powerful spell. He turns to little Wayne. Now tell me, Wayne, what are you doing back at the school? You're supposed to be with your parents in France. Oh, uh, are my parents awesome super spies in this time, dark timeline? No, your, your dad works for the government and your mom is a plagiarist, famous wizard author. Wait, dark timeline? Like, like back to the future, like, like a mirror universe thing? Either way, awesome, elaborate now. Well, you see... And for a few moments, Wayne moves his mouth silently. He makes some vivid arm motions like a Muppet. Time jumps forward four whole hours. And basically, that's how I ended up here. I think I'm very confused. It's kind of confusing. But all that to say, I'm cursed. That would make sense to me, mostly. A bit of an old days of future past situation, but different. Uh, now, we've got to get you out of here, back to your time, your parents. No matter who or what stands in our way, trust me, you don't want to be here for the ball of blood. Can I just ask, um, how did you, um, how did you end up so cool? We're all cool, Wayne Jr., but my story, 
Well, it's certainly right for a spinoff. During the battle at school, Potter was killed, so someone else had to stand up to protect others, to fight for justice, to save wizard, witch, and humankind all. I was the only man for the job. I became a real Luke Skywalker type, but you know, a wizard. Well, technically... I know. They refer to Jedi as sorcerers in A New Hope. You don't have to tell me. Awesome. My first fight was with the werewolves. I tamed them. Then to the giants. I brought them all down to our level, next to the dragons. Oh, <laughs> how I fought them dragons. Now I strike any and all of Mr. Boldy's followers that I can find. It's a hard fight. He's powerful. You look around, I bet you're thinking, all seems lost. It would be easier to give in, but we can't just all fall in line. Someone has to let him know that there are still those who believe in that power called good and what's right. Who cares about every soul on this godforsaken planet? Some of the death buddies think I'm just a myth, but they whisper the tale of the pup who owns the night. So I'll keep fighting. I'll keep owning the night until I'm face to face with the Dark Lord and I'll kill him good. I'll give the people hope. The sun shall shine on us again, just like in the third Matrix movie. Uh, how was that in this timeline? So amazing. Yours? Eh, not the best. <laughs> what? How do they mess that up? That's a shame. Say, what are the puffs like in your day and age? I wouldn't know. Um, I'm not one. And it's the worst thing ever. Wayne, there's one thing I've learned in life. It's to avoid putting too much stock in wizard stuff. Or hats opinions. It may change over time, but deep down, eventually, you know the person you want to be. And that's the person you are. All that matters is that we give each other the same chance to decide and the opportunity to keep living to find out. Anyway, come on. We've been here too long. we got to keep moving. In that moment, a soul-sucking security guard appears directly behind them. Shit! Expecting an expectation! The biggest spell you've ever seen. The security guard flees from Wayne's pure awesomeness. But little Wayne begins to feel a pulling sensation in his stomach. Oh no. I feel something. I think I'm being pulled back somewhere. One question. What am I like in your timeline? Well, you were... You died. In the battle. And Potter lived? He beat the Dark Lord? Yeah. Figures. Yeah. I guess your reality might be his story. This one, I think it's mine. And one day, you'll find yours. Another security guard appears. Puff on this, you kissing mother puffer! Those more security guards swarm all around them. Uh, uh, it, it was very nice meeting you, Wayne. I'm sorry your timeline is so dark. You too, Wayne. And don't worry about me. I'll use the power I got to save everyone I can while I got the time to do it. One last thing. Here. I found this way back when in the school tucked away in the trunk. It's a piece of a mirror. If you ever need someone to talk to, talk into the mirror. Uh, okay. But who will... Um, oh, whoa! Pop! Little Wayne vanishes. He travels through time and space because somewhere, someone has finally figured something out. Huh. Ginny, also a badass warrior in this time, enters. Who was that? Don't worry about it, babe. They make out, husband and wife, and it's just as hot as that. So, tonight's <laughs> the night we storm the government, blow it up, give them a fireworks show like they've never seen. V for Vendetta style. I love you. I know. They make out again, and it's hotter. Death buddies appear all around them. Look, there he is! Get him! <sighs> hey buddies, happy Mother Puffin' Bolden Day. Wayne and Ginny unleash a flurry of spells. They are unstoppable. Blackout. Part 5. Little Wayne lies flat on the ground. He's still bloodied and beaten from all that torture he went through for those 72 hours. He looks around to find he has returned to the prime regular timeline. I need to take a nap. He goes to take a nap. Scene, revelations and more time travel. 
hours later. Wayne wakes up. He rubs his eyes. He's decided to try and put this whole day or year or whatever amount of time's gone by behind him. He decides to get some fresh air. He stands in the sports place. Craig enters. Craig! Oh, Craig, you don't know how happy I am to see you. Hi, Wayne. I know because I'm just as happy to see you. I'm looking for Alan Scorpius. Everyone is. You want to look for them with me? Craig, I, I think there's something I want to tell you. Um, Wait, hold on, best friend. I, I have a present for you. I, I was able to borrow that quill again. Let me go get it and then you can tell me. Okay? Okay. Best friend. Craig begins to exit. He smiles back to Wayne, blushing. Wayne smiles too. This lingers for just a little too long. But then Craig looks out ahead. Oh, and look, I see Alan Scorpius. Hi, Al. And then a flash of green light. Craig dies, falling off stage. Wayne crumples to the ground. Craig? No. <laughs> Why? Why? Al and Scorpius back on, silently. In fact, there is total silence, profound silence, the kind of silence that's real quiet. No sniffles, no coughs, no phones ringing. A long, long silence. Oxford Dictionary defines silence as the complete absence of sound. This is the definition of silence. Why is everyone being so quiet? Suddenly, Craig's attacker enters. A girl. A girl who happens to look exactly like Mr. Valdi, except with pigtails. Her name, Lil Valdi. Lil Valdi enters. James enters as Lil Valdi. <laughs> Never mind him. All I care about is the prophecy. Prophecy? The prophecy. What prophecy? A totally true prophecy about you. See, you'll kill your father by recreating the darkest timeline imaginable. The whole world will be cursed. <laughs> Lil Valdi holds up the confiscated time twister. Why, Craig? Why did you? She twists it. Everyone is sucked through time, including Wayne. Not again. And just like that. They are gone, seeing the government again. Another meeting of the government. People stand in a clump. Oliver and Megan enter from opposite sides of the stage. They move to each other. They are disheveled, their assignments having taken quite a toll. This has been the longest two days of my fucking life. Yep. How's the book going? Nope. How's the form? Unsigned. Turns out he's a busy man, that Potter. Hermione and Harry stand in front of this large crowd. So, honestly, everyone, thanks for coming to this big meeting. Now, we are still getting the facts straight of just exactly what happened and why it's happened, so we can really only disclose so much information. Voldy had a daughter. Voldy had an evil daughter. <gasps> Headmaster McGee raises her hand. He had a daughter? Quiet, lady. Please stop yelling at me. Uh, whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hi, for, uh, two questions. Uh, first off, can you sign this form? No time. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> uh, second, how on earth did what's his name, who we try not to say, have a daughter? Yeah, I mean, what would that have even been like? All. Mm. I'll imagine. Flashback to a bedroom. The lights are moody. There are candles. Laying on this bed is a woman. A woman named Bella. She's ready. Off stage, we hear. All right, then. 
I'm coming in. You ready for me? Oh, yes, yes. You're definitely ready. Yes. Valdi enters wearing a nice black velvet robe. Oh. Tell me, do you like the lights on or off? I don't care. Just get to the ravishing, my dark lord. Hmm. Well, okay. I guess, um. We'll go with the lights on. Yes. Let me just put some music on. Barry Whitelos. Oh, yes. Now, I, I shall go ahead and remove my robe. Yes. Baldi does a bit of a sexy dance as he removes his robe. Rudy, her husband, pops in. Uh, yeah. You kids, have fun. You know what? Let's go with the lights off. Sometimes, when a boy whizzes and a girl whizzes, how? All right then, I, I suppose. Here we go. Yes. Intercourse. Yes. Hmm. Switching positions. Do you enjoy this? Yes, yes, my lord. <laughs> Please, no laughing. Wait. Wait. I'm so sorry. And flashback. Scene, meanwhile, back at the ministry, the government place, everyone stops imagining this. Scene, time traveling. Al, Scorpius, Lil Valdi, and Wayne are in the process of traveling through time. It's all CGI. Eventually, one of them notices Wayne and they push him away. <coughs> Wayne now flies alone into a different time stream. Eventually, he lands. Scene. The battle at the school, 1998. Little Wayne looks around. All around him, students are fighting a battle they didn't ask for. Yet, they fight it. A spell grazes past his head. He looks over. He sees the puffs. The class of 98, they fight together. A band of unstoppable humans capable of doing so much more than they could ever be expected to do. And they are great. A whale flies over their heads. Wayne smiles. Then an idea. But wait a second. If I'm here and it's now, then I, I can use the power I have the time I have to save someone. Maybe it was all for a reason. Maybe I can change time. Bonk. Wayne is hit with a piece of castle debris and is knocked unconscious. He falls to the ground. Oh, no. One hour later, he comes to. He stands <laughs> up. Turns out he's too late. Many of the puffs have already died. Their bodies lie all around him. Death buddies approach Wayne. Oh, no. 
about a Pop! Wayne vanishes, sucked once again through time. Scene, back to the future. And just like that, time in our story jumps forward, and we find ourselves back on the couch at the Rivers Jones house. Mother, father, and son sit, having experienced one weird year. They're all yeah. stare out, tired, defeated. Yeah, so again, to reiterate. Fourth year. Not so good. At least it may all be interesting for your book. No, I quit. I'm going to go find a job somewhere simple, like an ice cream store or selling beads. You ever get that form signed? Uh, one of the centaurs got to it. I'm going to resign. Maybe see if anyone needs a mug study tutor or something. <sighs> it's not all the worst, though. Mum, Dad, um, I have a surprise for you. A little ray of sunshine in this dark time. Um, during my time travel adventures, I, well, um, I got you a gift. I managed to save a dear friend of yours, and... I think they can't wait to see you. Wayne? Um, sadly, no. <laughs> Master Megan Jones. You must be Master Oliver. It's me. I'm alive and well, and now we'll all get to be together forever. The trio is back. Yay! Oh, I am Bippy and I'm alive. Everyone say yay! Yay. yay. Scene! A press conference. Harry approaches a podium. Several wizards take photographs. Settle down, settle down. It's just me, Harry. Nobody needs to worry any more about anything. We sent Lil Voldy to Whizpris, and the time-twisting devices have all been destroyed. So has the other secret time-twisting device that Blondo had. So now, I'm just going to double-check. Does anyone else have... A secret time twister. For a moment, no one raises their hands. Then, everyone raises their hands. Hands that are holding secret time twisters. Yeah, okay, let's turn those in, please. Now I'm going to ask again. Are there any other secret time twisters out there? Again, no one. Then, everyone pulls out their second secret time twisters. Yeah, yeah, give them here, give them here. Okay, okay, I'm going to just ask a third time. Does... One wizard raises his hand. He puts... He pulls out one time twister. He pulls out another time twister. He pulls out another time twister. He pulls out a whole bag of secret time twisters. I'm gonna need all of these. But then, Zack Smith enters. Ah, uh, yeah! What the fuck in these bags? He grabs the bag of time twisters. He takes one time twister and he twists it. Uh-oh. Zack Smith traveling through. Time! And just like that, Zack Smith travels through time. Perhaps to the 1920s? Find out in the Puffs prequel, Dude, where's my fantastic friends? A pause. One wizard digs in his pocket. Oh, I found one more. Scene. The epilogue, a.k.a. part six. We're back at the train station platform a few months later. It's time for year five. The Jones Riverses stand together, Bippy with them. Mom, Dad, I don't know if I want to go back to school. Oh. I don't blame you, but you have to. I just... Don't want to be surrounded by bad things anymore. Son, there will always be bad things. Some people, bad things are they're just attracted to them. But just remember, when you're in bad times, it's not make it worse for anyone else. Try to make it a little bit better. 
And always take note of the people making all the bad times worse. And make a pledge. Tell yourself, I will never be one of these people. Okay? I think I can do that. Now, what's one plus one? Three? Close enough. I'll take it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Bippy loves math. <laughs> And please, no more time travel. Don't worry about me. When I get there, I'll go right up to my room in the Brave Tower and never come out. Brave Tower? Why would you do that? Because I'm a brave. No, you're not. <laughs> you're a buff, just like us. Hi. Hi? Wait, so the timeline did change? I'm a puff. I'm a puff! <laughs> Wayne exits screaming with Muppet arms. They look off after him. Bippy hopes he'll be okay. Who knows? It's a cursed world we live in. And we're all just... It's cursed children walking on it. Cursed to wander. Like Susie Bones. From worry to worry. Cursed. 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 What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm jobless and tired. He'll be fine. He's a sweet kid. He's a sweet, weird kid. He'll be at least mostly fine. They hug. They look lovingly out towards the train as it departs the station. Harry and Ginny appear right next to them, also looking out lovingly. Bye, James. Bye, Lily. Bye, Al. Oh, jeez. Harry, do you think we can maybe name a kid after someone from my family? No! Anyways, I think we all learned a bunch of valuable lessons here. A silence. Nobody speaks. But one thing we never learned. Who was the child that was cursed? Harry removes his glasses dramatically, cutting his face again in the process. Harry exits as Ernie Mac enters. He hands Oliver and Megan a piece of paper. Oliver, uh, Megan, hi. I uh, just wanted to make sure I gave you this. Uh, what? What is it? An invitation to the 30-year School of Magic and Magic Class of 98 reunion. The whole gang back together. It's in seven years. But uh, it's never too early to look forward to seeing old friends again. Old, old friends. Ernie Mac breaks down remembering his old gone friends and he hugs the two in front of him. Um, we, we might be busy. Ernie, if you're here, who's driving the train? Choo-choo. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Will things ever be normal? Who knows? Scene. Wayne's room in the Puff's basement. And finally, we go one last time to Wayne, now decked out as much as he can be in so many layers of yellow and black. His blanket is even made of yellow Puff flags. He takes a small moving picture of Craig, and he hangs it to his wall. He lights a candle beneath it. I will remember you, Craig. Craig. Even if no one else will, I'll remember you. <laughs> Hashtag remember Craig. Wayne sits for a moment, then a thought. He digs around in his bag until he pulls out the mirror fragment he was gifted earlier. He speaks. Um, can anyone hear me? From the mirror, we hear the voice of badass Wayne Hopkins. Hi. Hi. The end. Yay! 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 yay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a good yay for yourselves afterwards. Um, we did it. Oh my goodness. each other, Matt. You're right. Um, uh, amazing. Um, this is absolutely incredible. So uh, thank you all so much for watching it. Thank you all so much for donating. Uh, just to let they, these people are... 
the cast doesn't know, we have raised $4,280, uh, <laughs> which is uh, genuinely insane. Uh, I didn't know if we could make the 1000 so uh, <laughs> thank you all so much, and thank you for tuning in. There were 611 people watching us at some point, which is by far the biggest audience that we have ever had. So thank you so much. Um, you know, this story does continue. It perhaps goes back in time again. Uh, it's just one part of four in the Puffs <laughs> tetralogy, Get out of here. I, I believe is the word. So uh, I guess let us know in these comments if you would perhaps like to see how it continues on and we can see what we can do. And you can pay attention to our social media and subscribe to this channel. Uh, but as promised, um, if we'd love to do just a quick Q&A, um, if anyone out there has any questions. Uh, and so please just start typing them. Uh, there's a lot of you typing right now uh, because we're 20 seconds in the future here. Uh, and let me tell you, it's great. <laughs> uh, Is it? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, just start typing questions. That Fun fact, though, so we did not actually read through that entire script prior to doing this, just like we normally do. We did some – we figured out some fun moments of how to basically hand things to each other, um, which Man. worth it. Uh, but I remember every time we do this that with the drinking game element, that every whenever I was writing it, it I remember – 10 pages later, I go, oh, I haven't used the word in a while. And then I just use it three or four times in a row. And that happens so many times. Um, okay. Uh, I'm seeing questions. All right. Let's, <laughs> yay. Sorry, I'm reading the questions. Oh, great. Where do I read them? Where do I read them? Well, I'll, I'll read them out loud to you if, if we want. But uh, we have what? Read them on YouTube. Yes. Oh, but you have to be sure to mute it if you let, go to it. Otherwise, it's going to. Let Matt do it. Yeah, let Matt technology. Do it. Technology. Okay. Ah, okay. chaos. Let, let one person Matt do it, yes. Um, let's just see. Uh, we have Elizabeth Sikora, I'm going to guess. Uh, Thank you for watching, Elizabeth. Sorry about that. What advice would you give to those students around the U.S. who have or are in danger of having puffs canceled? Um, uh, so this, I, I, I get, a, I get. It says I licensed the sound design out as well, so I've been getting a lot of emails from people I've been talking to, and just know that you're not alone, and there are a whole lot of people experiencing this just like you, and it's so tragic. And I think that all of us. Uh, I was going to point behind me, but uh, the two of us for sure, and all this, so like. For our hearts, that's you. I do think that the biggest thing that you can do, you know, is get together with friends on a platform like this. And even if it's just, you know, the, that, the, the amount of you and just read, read that, read something, just keep reading and making things like this and having fun with friends. Uh, I don't know, especially with Puff specifically yeah. and hope that you get to come back and do it again. And Nick and Langston have been doing two prov and figuring out how to do improv in this environment. So it's, you know, like figuring out how to be funny, how to create things in this world, which is new, but it's also kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, anyone else while I pick another question? <laughs> uh, and that, like, of course, I, I wish the performance part of it for all of you, but the process is just as valuable, too. So I hope that as, as, far, you were in, as far as you were in the rehearsal process, that it was enjoyable, uh, you know, whatever time you had with the show. I hope it you know, gave, gave you value. Yeah. Um, Wait, do this one. Uh, well, first, uh, we, can I just say, can I just say also, if you, if you have a cancel thing and like what Andy was saying, like Langston and I are doing two prod right now. And I know a lot of people are trying to do shows or, or we're doing this, use this time to create, use this time to make your own stuff. And also you don't have to, you, you can use this time to sit and, 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 and take care of yourself and take care of your family and friends and do what you need to. But if you feel moved to write, to get your friends on and, and, and produce something and read something and, and do jokes and whatever in any medium, if you want to do that, do it. And if you don't, don't. But, but use this time to whatever feels good. And yeah, that, that's the thing. Use it uh, wisely or, 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 or have a good time and, and binge watch all of Shit's Creek, like I am, because <laughs> uh, I've never oh, seen it before, and it's amazing. It's great, um, oh. but it's incredible. Um, or, or create and work with your friends and bring them on here and put on shows like this and let us know about it, and we will also help. Like we're, we're this is a web. We have a thing. Let's cast this net that we've created and let's use it together. Thank you, Nick. I'm going to zoom through some of these questions. There's so many questions. Thank you all. Wow, you are all wonderful. This is the first time we've ever gotten to experience something like this. So. My goodness, thank you all. Um, will Puffs, 
William FW, will Puffs ever be available to license in the UK? Sadly, most likely not. Maybe one day, but not in the foreseeable future. Very, uh, very many legal things. Uh, yes. Uh, are we, uh, Molly Rafferty, are we staying safe during quarantine? I believe that we all are, uh, and we all hope that you all are as well. Um, this is a, a w Sapphire Wolf. Would we ever perform the sequel live in a theater? I do believe it would be impossible. And also the answer is no. <laughs> um, this exists solely as a, it's an unauthorized parody and it, it solely exists to live in this sort of space as a free thing. Um, you know, what's happening in the world right now sort of provided this platform to get back together and do this and just have some fun. Uh, but no, it'll only ever exist in reading form, kind of like this, um, as it belongs. Uh, a lot of questions. David Levy wants to know, what is AJ and Ellie's cat's name? Oh, Fathead. Yeah. Fathead. in the chat during the, during the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He, when, we fir when I first got him, um, he, was, he was a rescue, and he was super underfed, so he had this huge head and this little tiny body, and I, he just looked so goofy, and I wanted him. Yeah. And so I adopted him. And the family who adopted him before me returned him because he was too skittish. And now he's just a perfect little love. Oh. And he's a fathead, and he's an angel. We have another cat that we locked out of the room. Because uh, Pippin is a mischief maker. And he an would have attacked us. Devil, you might say. <laughs> we were very impressed. Oh. Goose, did, Goose did a very good job. So everyone, this is very this is Goose. Yay. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Miles Foster wants to know, um, can we get a Puff soundtrack? Um, oh, boy. So Brian Metolius composed the music for the show. He also composed the, the extra little tidbits we saw here. Like, I just randomly texted him. He's like, yeah, sure. He's amazing. Uh, you can find some of these tracks, I know, on his SoundCloud if you search for him. His Twitter is linked um, down in the description below, so please follow him. And he makes music for wonderful things. He also is doing the soundtrack for... Our, our little group's next play, Kapowie Go Go. More information on that um, in various social medias of ours. I didn't link it here. Uh, oh, if you go to my website, which is linked down there, you can get more information on that. Uh, plugging things. Great. Uh, Autumn H wants to know, what was everyone's favorite part about doing Puffs? I mean, I think for all of us, we all kind of started as friends. I mean, we, we met a, a lot of us at a theater downtown uh, and at, at a comedy theater in New York as well. Um, and it's really incredible to make something with your friends and then have other people respond to that. And, and now to see, you know, high schools and, and productions around the world uh, doing it is, is incredible because, you know, we just started it on a shoestring budget, you know, a couple of years ago and could never have seen it going this far. So that's my favorite part. True. <laughs> my favorite part is Zach Smith. <laughs> Uh, this is everyone's favorite part. This is, cor this is corny. My favorite part is that I genuinely love all of you. Oh, yeah. there it is. <laughs> Doing any moment like this to hang out with all of you and see all of you is me. Yeah. And just coming up with the it, it was just fun even saying that that is just last night when we rehearsed this it was just getting together and coming up with bits uh, and that's a wonderful thing. So to all of you out there doing puffs, I think know the importance of the bit and coming together to make the bits. Um, uh, we have a request from Ainsley <coughs> Schwalbe uh, to shout out the Sheboygan South High Puffs cast. So Sheboygan, you've Sheboygan. been- Sheboygan. You, Sheboygan. You, Sheboygan. Sheboygan. Sheboygan, roll call. You've been shouted out. Um, amazing. Uh, what's, play, what's play number four? Well, after dude, where's my fantastic friends? Uh, and then that's, there's, that's, there's that one, then there's Puffs, then there's 19 this years after, and then there's Puffs 3, where one of the Fs is a 3, colon, Eventfulness Maximus, which really brings all of the crazy characters from these plays, uh, from the side plays, and uh, it really goes all out in like uh, Avengers Infinity War Endgame style, uh, and it's crazy. Uh, question. Howlett wants to know, when's the last time you all got to see each other all at once? Oh, boy, I think... In the real world? In the real yeah. world. Yeah, a while ago. In a while ago. Yeah, it was a while. Julie, Julie's going away? Yeah, when you... Julie's going away, was that it? <laughs> We're all together? She went well, because you came the back. side of the country and left us. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Well, we're all together on a very regular basis because we're all in Queens and Brooklyn, except for Julie, who we miss dearly. Um, but we actually we see each other too much. <laughs> yeah. 
Too yep. much, I see. Other, yeah, mean? outside. That wow, Jesse. <laughs> okay, wow. 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 Just kidding, you're my only friend. Oh, and I like All right, people. well, wow. this has been fun. Yeah, yeah. This is fun while it lasts. Yeah. Oh. As mentioned, a lot of us live. Oh, quickly, just one oh. tug on one thread. Whole <laughs> social <laughs> web unravels. Uh, yeah, a lot of us live in the same neighborhood, and so a lot of us see each other all of the time. So we're all friends. Um, amazing. Uh, Socks and Skirts wants to know, does anyone put their apples in the fridge? No. You do? Yes. Oh, Socks I do, yeah. yeah. Positive, and get apples are too I cold, thought you, you were can't bite into them. Yeah. Yeah. It makes them crisp. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I thought no. you were supposed to. Were we in the window? Hey, guys, AJ just took apples from us. <laughs> uh, Caroline G wants my to know uh, Megan is my favorite character Hey Julie, how did you focus on developing your character Throughout the original Puffs play Your development was incredible Oh my goodness <laughs> Thank you um, yeah, uh, I'm so excited that Megan's out there For the world to play uh, I think she's a, a cool character um, I guess it was a little bit of You know m Matt 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 Matt's writing Me <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt did um, <laughs> it was there, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm getting weird now. Um, and I don't know, like it really changed. We we developed this play over three-ish years, and so with every time we did it, I learned more about her. Um, I thought a lot about Avril Lavigne. <laughs> I thought a lot about Janice Ian from Mean Girls. A little bit of my like edge, if like. First of all, I was not like Megan at all in high school. I was a goody two shoes, super straight laced. So it was like, Megan's like a little bit of my alter ego. Um, so just playing around with that. Uh, but also she's, there's a goofy and vulnerable side to her, which is a lot of me too. So Megan's certainly a mix. It's a mix of me and my alter ego. Mm -hmm. um, Langston, <laughs> Jake the Snake very aptly has the same question for you, uh, preparing for, to be Oliver. Oh, uh, 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 not reading, no, I was saying not reading the books. No, it was really cool. Uh, it, I, it was interesting learning about the universe and thinking about the rules of what would it be like if you were approaching this universe from the outside in, but not from, uh, not from a, a layman's perspective. You're very, very intelligent. You're a very, very intelligent human being. And, you know, me and I was like the same way we do improv. And one of the tropes in improv is if this is true, what else is true? So if it is true, that Oliver is a math genius in the regular world and that these these wonderful wizard folk have never even heard of a telephone before. What does that mean when he's like in his growth and when he now finds a job? So I think the fun thing was just looking at the opposite side of that coin and really focusing on what would be the human reaction to finding out that wizards exist, they've existed for years, and they've actually been influencing world events that you thought were one way and they're not. And I think that was really cool. Um, and also it's really cool to develop like the friendship with, uh, with, with, with Wayne and, and Megan and form that trio and playing that, this, that, that idea of this kid knew you're new in school and looking for like your friends. And for me, it was always very special. That first moment where Wayne talks to Oliver, like I always loved playing like he was almost taken off guard that somebody spoke to him first and it's like, ah, what? So I think there's that, it was that fun thing of like, I'm new to this place, I'm new to this world. Oh, here's someone else like me. Oh, and here's this really terrifying uh, young lady who also does magic. Uh, maybe she can protect us from all the horrors in giant chess games. So <laughs> yeah, that was the fun thing of just kind of looking, looking from the outside in at this universe. Yeah. And fun Oliver fact, like from the get go of the show as well, that that character it probably changed the least over the course of the time, just because the, the bits from the beginning and Langston's so funny and so talented. They just they worked from the beginning to the point when when we moved to New World Stages, our final off Broadway home, I just added in new bits because he hadn't gotten any in so long. <laughs> uh, and, and that's where the uh, what's the the math problem at the end of it. Uh, Rachel Carter wants to know what keeps you coming back to the Puff story. Um, similar to what we were just saying earlier, part of it is just, I love this group of people. Uh, they're all very funny and they're all very good at being funny. Um, and it's just fun to write for them, to make ourselves laugh. They make me laugh. I try to make them laugh. And the other side of that is just uh, for you all out there, the fans of the show have been so grateful and they came and saw the show multiple times. They've watched the movie. They've shown the movie to their friends. Uh, against their will sometimes i'm sure um and it, it really it's i am a fan of many 
nerd and geek properties uh and the fact that i you know there's people who like something that was that came somewhere out of this mind uh i just want to make sure that i i like to continue to stay engaged and keep giving you things to thank you for being willing to like this because it takes a lot of effort to like things i do believe and not just hate things um and so it's for also for all of you uh matthew gerstman probably uh let's see um Oh boy, I should have read this. I was talking. Uh, the Wait, can I quick shout out? I just saw, I glanced at the chat and just saw Anya from Midlothian, which is right next to my hometown. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Midlothian, Midlothian, you have been shouted out. Um, the, someone wants to know the strangest part of this experience, this thing that we just did. Please tell me. I mean, I thought it was so strange that I got like butterflies because I'm I got a dress on, but I have sweatpants on under my dress and then socks with like <laughs> with like stickies on the bottom that you get at, at hospitals and stuff. It was just so comfortable. So I was like, oh, no big deal. We're in our living rooms doing this. But I got like nervous. But no, maybe that's just me. <laughs> No, we all got nervous before. Okay, good. Um, and uh, I, I also think, you know, like when you do a comedy, you're used to hopefully hearing laughter if you do it right. And it was very strange to just be doing this and being like, well, I hope people are. I, I apologize for all the times you could hear my laughter because Matt couldn't mute the mic, and I, I was laughing. I'm sorry. That's why I would um, mute my mic so that nobody's <laughs> my laughter. It turns out I just never turned it back on. <laughs> I had the I had the great moment of uh, I had the great moment of right before my girlfriend Kat was like uh, coughing up and then had to throw up and I was like, You do this now. You throw up right now before this goes live. And then we were like, You go and we were like, Go here and I was like, Are you okay? But we gotta clean this up and you gotta do it now because we can't. I'm going live, friend. Yeah. That's, the part of he's movie. okay. He's okay, by the way. He's doing great. He's, in fact, he's running this normal cat. Time. I was petting him right now. Going yeah. around. Uh, uh, there are so many questions, and I'm so sorry that we're not going to get to all of them because I'm going to be honest. I don't know how this works. Uh, <laughs> James, what was your favorite Valdi megaphone monologue? Ooh. Oh, the type five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's your favorite? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. I think I think Type 5 was the one I looked forward to the most. The, uh, my favorite experience doing it um, was the very last one that Matt gave me <laughs> um, about going through and, like, you know, not having any shoes and no one's giving me any. And, oh, yeah. You know, that 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 whole bit, but to, that was special because it was, like, um, you know, it was, the end, it was the end of the show. I was getting to do something new when it was something I'd done hundreds and hundreds of times before, and that felt really emblematic of what Tufts was like, that so much was the same, but it was also always different, and Matt's always refining it, so even at the end, I get something fresh to play with. Um, so that was really special. Like, that's one of my favorite memories of the show, but that my family physically was there walk for the very the first time. It was, like, it was a lot of things together, and I saw them, and I noticed where they were in the audience right then. Um, so that that's a big one, but the other the type five, I would just look forward to that. If I knew I was doing the type five <laughs> that night, it would feel good. Um, and fun. Oops, sorry. Uh, uh, fun fact about that too. So that is those exist, and again, and this is something maybe out there for people who want to make stuff and what the, the energy of what can happen there. Like there are so many of those. Just because one day we had like three of them just because I thought it'd be fun again to, we had a lot of people coming and seeing the show multiple times. So it's like, ah, I want to give them something to make it different. That's why we have like Zach Smith and the Valdi stuff. But one night I remember James being like, if you want to give me more, you can. I went, Oh, <laughs> and so then by far the best ones came from that, which was the shoes one, the, the Pilates one, the really, really silly dumb ones. Cause it's like, Oh, what else can we do? And there's even one that's not in scripts anywhere that, uh, that only was performed towards the end of the run. I know Keith Rubin did it towards the end, but it was uh, where Valdi has just seen a new movie called Free Willy 3. Uh, and he goes through the entirety of the plot of Free Willy 3. The real plot. And it's so long. It was so Very long. long. Um, boy, there's a lot of shout outs here. Uh, a lot of, I've seen a lot of questions about how did we do this right now and how are we making this happen. Um, it was a frantic week of me reading a lot of stuff. So, But we're using a program. We're on Zoom. We're using that to a program called Streamlabs OBS, um, which is a free software. Um, and you can kind of just finagle a lot of things and you can just stream it straight to YouTube. You can stream it to Twitch. Um, there's a lot of videos about how to use this. If you have a Windows computer, it's apparently easier. I'm using a Mac, so you have to download a bunch of other stuff to capture the audio. Um, and boy, is it stressful. I will tell you that. Uh, <laughs> but 
We did it. Um, amazing. There's a lot of shout outs here, so I'm just gonna shout it real quick. Steven Stevenson High School, you've been shouted out. Yeah. Woo! Uh, Woo! See, I saw a bunch and then now I don't see any more. Uh, <laughs> so we'll whenever I see them. Uh we can we can edit. We Win a can win, win a kind of high school puffs cast. You've been shouted out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe start pronouncing stuff. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> there were a lot of curses in that. Show. Officer ring. Officer ring. Uh, uh, let's ring. see. Uh, James, can you do your best Tim Curry impression? I think we've already Ooh. heard it. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like all right. I'm gonna max my forehead just a little bit, and I just smile really big like this. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Like there is the song from Uncanny. Tim Curry. Can you give us a, a giant Um right. we we have a what are, wait, did you do it? I wasn't paying attention. The <laughs> <laughs> Uh what are you guys all working on outside of puffs? Like right now? Sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh not a lot right now. Uh D like Dana Castro. Yes. Y'all like Animal Crossing? Cast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, follow follow AJ Diddy's Instagram if you really want to look at Animal Crossing in a new way. Uh, a dark way. I'd like to personally request that everyone in our audience buy one audiobook. It doesn't have to be one oh. of mine. Just please. Keep James it and I going. did do an audiobook together. We need you. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. Like almost all I'm doing um, in this time of home studios. So. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm doing a lot of VO. I did a, I'm doing a couple of recordings for my uh, a lot of equipment came to my home uh, from Marvel where I uh, digitally hosted this. So there's a lot of equipment in my home I've never used before. It's very expensive that I don't <laughs> in my home because it's so nice. But uh, yeah, I'm still doing that from home and still um, like doing that. So <laughs> that's really cool. Still engage with. Things. We're doing improv shows. We're still doing improv shows. Look at that. We're still doing improv shows. Uh, I'm doing a reading on Sunday of uh, my friend's zombie movie that she wrote. It's gonna be fun. Create some stuff. Like you're saying now is the time to like create, and that idea that you may have had in your head, if you feel moved to like see where it might lead, do it because it's led to a lot of experiences that I didn't even think I would ever. I would never thought that I would ever be doing shows, looking at a computer screen and feeling as fulfilled and as as excited as I do when I'm in front of an audience. And this is awesome so this is a very very rare experience and a rare opportunity for us to all start creating some really interesting stuff like this hopefully one. <laughs> this is incredible none of us thought we would be here doing this yeah no absolutely not um i know oh, i know that i saw i can't find it here who asked but i know there was a similar question to the one about uh megan and oliver to Susie bones that maddie uh what was your process of i'm Susie bones <laughs> Um, what was my what's my Susie Bones process? What was it? How did you how did you get there? Um, on a, okay, so I, I I've only told a few people in the cast, but um, I uh I think of her as that as the uh, the the woman who's stuck in the walls in Jane Eyre, <laughs> who like climbs through the the walls. I that's her. That's Susie Bones like inner <laughs> life for me. Wow. What? Is that she thinks she's the the woman in like in the attic? Why it's our grouses too? That's my process. Well, that explains it all. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It. There it is. You got it. That's it. And a little, and I think Mrs. Havisham too. I think she thinks she's Mrs. Havisham. Uh, uh, um, AJC three forty says, uh, no question, but they should be proud of ourselves for raising this money for Queen Speed Hospitals. But we should also, we should all be proud of ourselves, including you, because you did it, and it's now at four thousand six hundred and ten dollars, which is again amazing. I'm sorry, say the number again. Say the number again. Four thousand six hundred and ten dollars. We should have had a higher goal than a thousand. Um, should should we come back next week with another one of these? We'll probably pick another charity, and we will have another fundraiser. Maybe we'll set it higher. Maybe not, because this, you know, makes you feel good. Um, my uh, um, let's see, Cranbrook, you've been shouted out. Oh, uh, oh, hey, Cranbrook. Cranbrook. Oh. Cranbrook. It's in Michigan. It's in Michigan. Cranbrook, can I just say something? Cranbrook Cafeteria has some of the best goddamn pizza I've ever yeah. ate. <laughs> that pizza is delicious. It's I will go wrong. there and I will eat all the Cranbrook pizza that I could get. We hang out in high school. tell you 
I love it. We all had the chance to visit Cranbrook, their, their school in Michigan, back in the fall and see some of their rehearsal process. And it was amazing to get to connect with students one-on-one. -on -one. And eat their pizza. It, eat their pizza. It's, <laughs> the pizza was delicious. It's all aces, says a shout out to the New York Boy Wizard Group for letting me know about this event. And we'd also like to shout them out as forever for always because they've been a huge help for us for no particular reason. We're not associated with anything they, they like. Um, uh, da, da, da. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, so, I'm still scrolled at the top. Uh, who, who's playing Animal Crossing? Uh, <gasps> Daniel. Who isn't? I only have to get. I've paid off everything yeah. except for the I'm basement not. of my house. So you paid off. Basement? What kind of game is this? Yes. <laughs> I don't have time to explain this to you, non-animal crossers. Um, we have uh another. Wait, who's better, awkward Wayne or badass Wayne? Let's go one by one. Uh, Ellie and AJ first. Who's better? <laughs> awkward Wayne. All right. Wayne. Okay. Oh, rude. Um, I'll say awkward Wayne because he's kind of me. Yeah. Andy? Awkward Wayne, because then when badass Wayne is only there for a little bit, you're like, yeah. Zach. Both. Great. <laughs> Langston. Yeah. I got to say awkward, because that's my way. It's my best friend. Jesse. Awkward Wayne is badass. Julie. <laughs> awkward Wayne. Nick. <laughs> badass Wayne. Maddie. Oh, the badass. Awkward badass Wayne, Wayne, because I get to give him a big hug. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Great. James. Awkward. He's the reason you like badass Wayne. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. James, True. bringing it home. True. Amazing. Uh, Rarely done productions, Puffs. You have been shouted out. Yeah. I believe you won yeah, an award. Yeah. Oh, it's been one year since their anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Happy anniversary. Wow. Wow. Happy uh, anniversary. Amazing. Absiversary. Happy absiversary, y'all. Yeah. Are there? Thanks, <laughs> Oh, wait, perfect. I don't know if you're all seeing you guys in the same order, but where I am, it kind of looks like they're your abs, Langston, because you're Ooh. on top of them. <laughs> yeah, it's funny for me. <laughs> the NTPA cast of Puffs, you've been shouted out. Go NTPA! Yeah. 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 What are you doing over there? <laughs> a lot of requests for James. Hey. A lot more Tim Curry coming for James of getting a Frankenfurter. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everybody's already half seen that, right? I don't need to go get the music on for everybody. You saw when you're for Halloween, we were all going to dress up. I'm going to send some good Tim Curry lines for James to do on his all, We all at one point were going to do Tim Curry characters. For Halloween, yeah. For Halloween. Specifically because of James, but then Julie had to be Wonder Woman. So. <laughs> And it was it was a great Wonder Woman. Um, a very a serious and real question from Daniela Luna: Advice for someone who wants to pursue a career in theater but isn't receiving much support, especially from parents. Oh, Ooh. I oh. went to school with uh, I was gonna graduate with a molecular biology degree, and I don't know if my dad knew that I had switched to theater until now. graduation day. <laughs> if you're watching, I'm sorry. Also, hi dad, hi mom. Um, but now everything's great. <laughs> um, it's, it's hard. I think if you can double major, if you can say like, this is what I love, so I'm going to do it. But also I have this thing that makes the parents feel a lot safer. Um, but you know, you, it, you got to do what you love or else you'll, you know, not be in love with what you're doing. You're the wrong with mine. <laughs> That's all I have. Yeah. I would say, I would say do it like I'd hopefully... If you're doing what you love and you're performing, the, anyone who may not be on board when they see you being your shoes and they see you having fun, they see you enjoying yourself and 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 seeing that energy come out of you. Hopefully, they'll understand. Oh, this is what this person is trying to convey. I mean, I get it, but I if if, if they, I hope these, these parents love you. I'm sure they do. They want to see you happy. They want to see you at your fullest. So when they see you perform and when they see you out there doing your thing and killing it as we know you're going to do. Hopefully they understand that's what it's all about. That's what they were trying to tell, what she was trying to tell. So go for it. Yeah. Relentless. I would say too, like even if they don't at first support you and you have to take time away from it because you don't get to control, you know, where you're going to college as much as they do having the purse strings. Like you have time to get good at acting. You have time to get into theater. Things don't have to happen right away to happen in your life. You know, and the older you get, the more freedom you have to choose for yourself. And like, it'll be there waiting for you. 
you know, it'll be okay. And one of the things about being an actor for any period of time is you find all these walks of life that people came to it from, you know, it's not like there's one way to get into it or to get good at it. So you have time to find that path. Yeah. And everything informs it, whatever kind of experience you have in life, say you are a biology major or you're something else, you have that in your back pocket. And when that part comes, that's that person knows about biology, you are the perfect person for it. And like, you can't, um, every experience has value to you for this, for any art, any art field, art field, art form. <laughs> yes. Correct. You're right. Correct. You just yeah. And not, not everyone in this cast even, you know, I, I majored in theater, but also political science. Not not everyone went to theater school. We have a mix of, of people who were doing it in school, but also came to it after college. And I think to that, even just the way to find the most support, if you are in this, um, is amongst the other people around you doing it, no matter their situation, just the more people you have who are also trying to make theater and things. Uh, that's all the people who can help you make theater and things. Um that's how this show exists. Fun fact. So, yes. Sure. So, see, at two hours and 35-ish minutes in, you learn something. Um, great. Uh, we're going to do some more quick questions. We're only going to do a few more because uh, this is longer than I thought it would be. But there's so many of you watched, so thank you. Uh, quick one. For the people who play multiple characters in the show, which one is your favorite to play? Uh, I'll just throw it to a few people who I know play multiple ones. Uh, Steve. Oh, uh, Potions teacher. It's just delightful. Great. Ellie. Anna. Oh, so awkward, awkward Hannah. Andy. In this show or in Puffs? Puffs, Puffs. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> None of them. You were in Carousel. It was, it was so long What was your favorite ago. character? I you forgot idiot. all of it. So I know the studio over here wants to go through a whole... Wow. I, I like no, Leanne. Tell us everything you've ever so played ready for anything. Okay, that. okay, I like Leanne. Leanne's my favorite. But I was trying to think of a more creative <laughs> answer, but that's the answer. Jesse. Leanne was my mom's favorite too. Bippy. Always Bippy. Bippy. Bippy's my favorite. Nick, you're probably Zack Smith, right? Your mom is smart, Langston. No, if I had to pick one, it would be Zack Smith. <laughs> oh, okay. Zach Smith. <laughs> Zach Smith. <laughs> Zach Smith from the from the one that you we haven't read from the certain one the one yes. the right Zach Smith oh you're right yes um and Maddie Marshall great um another quick one we're just gonna go th down the line from my screen um also I think we shout shout shouted out Midlothian but Midlothian again shouted out <laughs> Midlothian or maybe not Midlothian. if not Midlothian. <laughs> Um, shout it out. You've been uh, shouted out. If you could play be any other Puffs character, who would you like to be? AJ. Uh, you know, I've always I've always kind of wanted to give Oliver a go. Ellie. Um, Zach Smith. Great. Me. I wish I would have done the lighting design. Not really. Uh, that's just that's a joke. That's a joke I made once in a Q and A, and they thought it was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> and, Andy. Uh, I love the Cedric Boldy track because it's just like the epitome of goodness and the epitome of evil. Great. The rain. Uh, Zach. <laughs> I would like to do the Susie Harry Myrtle track. <laughs> and I want to see it. Langston. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. Uh, this, is not, this is not even corny. Uh, it, it's always a toss between. Uh, but I got to say, uh, Cedric, man. Mm. Cedric, that's. Ooh, I, I want to shout the title. Jesse. Uh, Wayne. I did it once when during a rehearsal yeah, and Zach was book. there. He knows all the lines. <laughs> it's not like I'm waiting in the wings. It's just, it, I just knew them. Julie. <laughs> so out for traps nope. for two years nope. <laughs> julie susie bones Ooh. nick uh honestly to be on uh to be real no lie the character that i'm not gonna lie to you the yeah. character that that i i see the emotional depth and that i want to follow through and like it makes me cry every time i i, I watch that scenes with it is i would want to be uh the ron Ma. <laughs> I knew, I knew that was not going. Uh, God, Great. what a what a long walk! And we cut to <laughs> Madeline Bundy. <laughs> I uh, I love Oliver Rivers. I want I want to be Oliver Rivers. Again, oh. want to see that, Steve? Uh, narrator. <laughs> oh, I'd also want to see that, James. <laughs> Oliver. Ooh. Okay, so maybe I, agree. I will say because Oliver is so popular and I didn't expect it to be. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe <laughs> this is the time can, to do puffs out of a hat. Puffs out of a hat. There's a dream of. We all we put all the tracks into a hat and we all draw them and we can't look at the scripts. We just have to go based off of the lines we think we know. Okay, but that right. was very no, wow. when we discussed it while we were all still doing the show. That'll like, just I... make it more exciting, Ellie. Okay. And we'll have um, uh, Jake, Keith, and Cullen were our swings, and they can be our phone of friends. It'll be great. I love this idea. You'll have to license the show from Concord Theatricals. <laughs> um, amazing. <laughs> is there a Zach Smith archive? Uh, no. Kind of. Kind of. Oh, I guess, actually, uh, our stage yeah. manager... Kay no, Kayla, Kay we do yeah. have uh, an email chain, or not chain, but there's we have in our emails is every single Zach Smith that ever happened in text form. Mm -hmm. um, you can also find a bunch of them in the back of the Puff script, which you can order on the internet. Um, which I have right. Uh, which can be contact Nick wrote a bunch. delivered to you. That's right. Uh, in this time. Um, doo -doo -doo. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to laugh at that and then not read it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sap Sapphire Wolf, Madeline, they love your hair. Damn. Great. It is great. I did have, I did have fun. I cut part. it a little bit in quarantine time. I don't know how to cut it. Did you cut it or just don't look at, I cut it. Don't look at the back. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just saying, I see Anthony Freeman here. Anthony, thank you so much for watching us and supporting the show for so long. Anthony. <laughs> I know I saw Jonathan too. Oh, oh yes. Oh, we love you. Thank you. Um, Jonathan. He's gone. Uh, let's see. Uh, I man, screen names are hard to read. I Cheyenne love. Uh, James, did you improv Valdi's megaphone monologue? I'll answer it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Could have let me lie. But let me I could have. Oh. He came up with it all themselves. Oh, that was the same one I asked you earlier. Uh, Actually, I wrote, I wrote all my lines in the show. Oh, you're right. Actually, yeah, James came up with it. Uh, <laughs> It, it's very tiny. Um, I have a William FW has a question for Nick. What was your process of creating a new and different improv scene for Zach Smith every night for all the Zach Smiths out there? Oh, it's terrifying. Uh, actually, because it grew from something that was just like a quick joke to be uh, going on to a huge story. Honestly, uh, I used stories in media. I used stuff that was happening. I did a lot of things where I just like told this the plot of a movie that i liked uh i would uh go off of any little thing that i could figure out uh and have fun and sometimes i would just mess with the people on on stage sometimes i would just be like hey i'm just gonna make you do this and and torture you for you uh, a minute huh you would pull things from like our conversations backstage or sometimes yeah. like, i feel like i was we shamed like, oh i had this weird dream times. and then you would riff off of it yeah it was either pulling things from backstage, uh, recounting movie plots, uh, using something that, that was topical. Uh, maybe I just was like, hey, Zach, I know you don't like improv. I'm just going to mess with you. Uh, or, or just, hey, yeah. Hey, here's a thing that I can play with. I found a thing backstage. It's anything and everything. And, and there were no... Uh, I will say this, and I... Yeah, there was no piece, and I will say this, and I told this to some people one time when we worked with a, a group, uh, the best thing you can do is make it personal. Make it something fun for yourself. Um, I saw a group do it one time, and they were like, hey, can you give us notes? And they like, they just did a movie, but they just recounted the story of a movie. And I always said, I put myself in the character of the movie, so if it was like, I don't know, any movie, Home Alone or, 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 or whatever, I was... Uh, 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 Kevin McAllister instead of I saw this movie. Make it personal. Make the story, whatever you make up, you are the character and have fun. Have fun. Use all the people around you. Uh, even if they don't want to be used, they're going to be there for you because they're amazing and you have this amazing group of people around you and, and they're there for you and you're there for them and you're each other's safety nets and that's cool. The thought of all the high school age Zach Smiths out there just delights me every time I think about it. Uh, <laughs> Mythical Thinker asks, how did you decide on a mop for Ron? Fun story. Uh, the idea of Puffs itself uh, happened. I was on a subway train. I was going to a party uh, where I believe I, I saw Ellie. Ellie Ellie was the first person I ever told about this idea. Um, uh, and uh, in that train ride, the idea of the title and that Ron would be played by a mop were the two first ideas that happened. Um, and I... 
can confirm. Yes, and they were fun times. Um, question uh, from Brooke Talbot. How hard is it to switch from character to character for those who switch? Um, anyone? Um, I, mean, I would switch my ahead, hair. Jesse. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I mean, I'll, I'll, so much of it, uh, first off, when you're drawing from anything or drawing from characters in real life or movies, you know, you have this kind of wealth of, of, uh, of voices and fun accents you can draw from. Um, a lot of it when we're, you know, it's hard in here, we all were like frantically taking little props and costumes. We all obviously oh, have. I loved your goatee, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Love good. Try to do with what you know. You you the costumes and and props do so much, and then the voice informs it, and uh, and and it's just fun to find a really outrageous different voice for each character. I think and, I I feel like we all lead with voice first, or I do. Well, I don't, I don't and know. also yeah, Maddie I, designed such great costumes. My Leanne skirt had like a snap on it because I had some quick changes that were like literally exit the stage come immediately back on as a different character and so for me the costume really helped and we had like a whole team of people that would like swarm around me and I would change my hair while they were taking off my sweater and the skirt and then hand me a baguette and boom I'm Frenchie and so I I think Maddie's costumes helped me more than anything else honestly yeah, yeah. um I say we'll do uh, is everyone on the zoom good for like 10 more minutes of questions Good. Good. I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> uh, can I can I say something real quick? No. Sorry, I just got a. I just no. I, it's because I got a tweet right now. Oh. From from Matthew. I, and normally I would be like, hey, don't listen. To, uh, but from Matthew Jerstman, he just he just tweeted me. He said, I will donate five hundred dollars to a charity of your choice if you do a Zach Smith rant to the plot of When Harry Met Sally. <laughs> And then, and we'll then I asked, and then I asked, are you watching the live feed right now? Which he said, yeah, and I promise I'll do it. Queen's Beast Hospital or anything else. Oh boy. Uh, well, can, we can all turn our screens off and leave you to it, Nick, if you want. Like, well, can, is well, that okay? Is that, yeah. yeah. Go yes. for it. Please. Yeah. Actually, I mean, no, actually, I guess. Make... We'll just watch you. Sorry. No, uh, need... I'm sorry. <laughs> We need Susan. Can the four, can yeah. the original four be there? Yeah, the original four should be there. Yeah, all right. Uh, setting the scene. Um, uh, the, oh boy, what happens before this? Oh, Wait, uh, hold, on, hold on. I gotta get, I gotta get in my, I gotta get in my character too. Jesse tries on. to kiss Zach. It's Jack, it's Jesse and Zach, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Likes it. Uh, 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 Megan and Oliver are uh, yes. are talking to Wayne, and then you know they're making out. They open through. They go through a door. Uh, Wayne opens the door, and it's like, oh, what are you guys doing? Uh, and he's like, oh boy, I think I'm gonna try out for the sports team. Uh, and then there are the sound of air horns. Yo, hey, 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 what's up, you leaky buttholes? <laughs> Zach Smith in the house. <laughs> Zach Smith in. Don't worry about it. That's my dog that I brought in because I got a dog nowadays. It's me, Zach Smith, ready here for the party. So you all are here to make the sports teams, right? A.K.A. get in. Uh, uh, or me, hot ladies, uh, 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 hot ladies, uh, 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 hot ladies. Hey, you with the tiny ball. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay, yeah. You ever been loved? No, not yet. You never, you never been in love before? Uh, no. You with the giant. Wiffle ball. I'm talking about, yeah, you, you, yeah, you touching stuff. You ever been in love? Yeah, you're pulling out the, the, the stuffed doll. You ever been in love? No. Let me tell you a story. I was in college and I was dating somebody and I was like, okay, and I'm gonna move to New York City. And I was, and then my, my, my girlfriend was like, well, you have to travel with my friend. And I was like, sounds good to me. So I went with her and we were traveling around in a car and I was like, hey,
guess what? Guys and girls can't be friends. And she was like, that's stupid. And I was like, no, it's not. It's what happens. And she was like, you're cynical. And I was like, no, I'm not. And then I was like eating grapes. And then I tried to spit out the window, but the window was up. And I was like, don't mock that. And she was like, you're so cynical. And I was like, you know what's cynical? Is that when I read a book, I read the end of it before I even start it so that in case I die, I know how it ends. And she was like, you're so weird. And then we go to like a dinner and like we're eating there and she's like really adorable. And she's like very specific about how she eats her food. And I was like, that's cute. And then she's like, I want this, but a side of this. And if you have the strawberries, but instead of this, then I was like, ooh, girl, I love you. So never, ever, ever going to let you go. Uh, 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 uh. But then she's like, I'm never going to touch you. I won't have anything to do with you. And I was like, I got it. Fine. I will let you go. We're never going to do that. And she's like, cool, cool, cool. We're just friends. And I was like, we can't be friends because that's not a thing. But I'll see you later. Bye. Cut to. <laughs> I'm in an airport. Walking through. I see two people making out. And I go, excuse me. Do I know you? And then she's looking at me and I go, not you, him. And I'm like, I know you. And he's like, hey, yeah. And I was like, bye. And then we're on the airplane. And then I go, just kidding. I know who you are. And she's like, oh, no. And I'm like, let me sit with you, friend. And the guy's like, sure. And then we sit and we're like talking. And she's like, leave me alone. But guess what? We become fast friends. We become the closest of friends. And then slowly it unravels of how much of our friendship is. And it's just like, oh, we're so hanging out all the time. And then, like, it's like, oh, we're seeing each other more and 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 more. And it's growing. It's fast forwarding. It's, it, it keeps going on. And then I'm just like, hey, let's go out and do something. And she's like, I'm on a date. And I'm like, say what? Because I got too much pepper in my poppy tush. And she's like, I'm going to go on a date. I was like, that's cool. Respect. Go on your date because you proved me wrong about this. Also, we try to get to date each other's friends. Runa Kirby. Uh, 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 Carrie Fisher, RAP both. Guess what? They found each other. And we were like, respect. They did that. And we were like, guess it's just us. And then we got closer. And we got closer. And every time we were just like, hey, let's watch movies together. Casablanca. Everything going on. She helped me put my rug out. She helped me go through my divorce. Everything was going great. And then all of a sudden, one time she calls me over and she's upset because her ex-boyfriend, the guy that I saw her making out with on a plane, is like married now and she's like what's going on and i'm like let's go check in i'm gonna go check in with her and we're there and we're laughing and she's crying and we start kissing and then we hook up and i'm like yo what's happening and then i wake up and i go this is too much for me because i'm not emotionally there because i'm an emotionally stinted guy are you okay are you okay tennis ball you stretching like you okay you you good with this okay yeah, good yeah. stay in it all right and i feel like emotionally stilted because i'm like why aren't I ex except why, what's happening? I need to be a part of this. So I'm like, but I can't. I'm like, the next day I'm, I'm putting my pants on. She looks at me and I go, I make a terrible excuse. I go, I got, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And then I'm talking to my friend, Bruno Kirby. She's talking to her friend, Carrie Fisher. They're all RIP, both of them. They're amazing. And she's like telling them and they're both there in the bed. and They're both discussing. And they're like, uh oh. And they're like, isn't this good? I'm like, no. And then we have this weird, awkward moment, and then we separate because every rom-com is boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy meets girl again, whatever you want. And I'm like, what's going to happen now? What, what's next? So I'm sitting there, and we're going to this thing. Then we go to our friend's weddings, and we're there, and she's pissed at me. She's throwing drinks at me. She's throwing stuff at me. She's upset. I'm upset. What are we going to do next? Then cut to New Year's, New Year's Eve. And I'm there, and I'm like alone. My friends are out. My friends are with her. I'm there. I'm alone. I'm like, what am I going to do? I decide to walk the streets. I'm having some ice cream. I'm walking through the stores, and I'm there doing my thing, and I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? What's happening? And then I realize I'm in love, and I don't need this ice cream. So I throw the ice cream. I go run to her. I run to them. I run out. They're all dressed up. It's a fancy ball. It's a fancy place. It's all up in this high place. I run up to her. She's there. I try to talk to her. She has. She wants nothing to do with me. We've already shared all this thing. I go up to her. I keep talking. I keep sharing this thing with her. And then I tell her that finally I say, sometimes you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody. And when you realize you do, you realize that the rest of your life is right now. And I start to explain every little thing about her, little crease in her forehead, 
and all that stuff. And I tell her how much I love her. And she freaks out. It's already past midnight. And she's looking at me. And she's so tired of me. And I'm tired of her. But we're in love with each other. And we, we kiss. And we find love. And, uh, and then cut to our, uh, our, our, uh, our, our two, our little, uh, our interview. And how much that we've gone through. Of how we met each other. Hated each other. Met each other again. Hated each other. Became friends. Hated each other again. And then fell in love. And that was how me, Zach, Harry Smith, met Sally Albright. <laughs> Sally. Let's stop these times. <laughs> oh my oh, god. I never... <laughs> did not know that was coming. That was the actual like full plot of when I Harry met Sally. I wanted to give, <laughs> this person was very... <laughs> But I'm just, I'm so impressed yeah. because you didn't know that was coming. And I know you love When Harry Met Sally like I do, I, but that was Oh, like, I love When Harry Met Sally. I love every rom-com. I love it. Yeah, this person, okay. Um, three, right? That was impressive. Yes. <laughs> I apologize to everyone Hopefully out there person... who just got When Harry Met Sally spoiled for me. I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so sorry if I did, yeah. It's worth it for alone. Um... Okay, Aww. we're going to zoom through. We're going to do this for like five more minutes. Um, we're just going to zoom through some real quick questions. I think I'm still really behind in questions, so if you've asked them really recently, I'm so sorry, but we'll do this again, and you can ask more, uh, and you're also amazing. Um, um, uh, uh, lovely. For Andy, what was your favorite part of playing Leanne? She oh, played Leanne, too. She loves us. Oh, <laughs> congrats. That's my favorite character. Um, I, I like I like the battle. <laughs> the battle was really fun. I got to do some of the choreography for that because I started as a dancer. So getting to just you know start off as the underdog and everyone thinks you're stupid and then being like kicking butt all over the place is great. Also, Eleanor Roosevelt High School, you have been shouted out. there, but in New York, oh. Eleanor Roosevelt. That, if it is that Eleanor Roosevelt, because if so, we know people who went there. We didn't go there. Yeah, well, neither of us went there. But, Very but... close to our middle school, though. That was such a buildup. Yeah, <laughs> we got excited. It's uh, El Rose. I someone uh, em Emily. Emily says, I've never seen When Harry Met Sally, but now I don't need to. So that's great. You don't. Uh, you don't. You don't. Oh. Still watch it. <laughs> no, definitely watch it. It's one of the greatest films of all time. Just definitely watch it. Um. I did to see also whether is there any advice for Leanne's? Bell Banana asks. Um, I think it's really easy to play her stupid, but really I always pretended that she or the backstory for her was that she lived in the woods and didn't know she was a wizard, and so you know just the same way that like eleven year old Andy when I read the books I was like oh my gosh being a wizard would be so amazing. So Leanne is literally just you know you're you as a fan thrown into the world and everything is so amazing and so exciting sweet potato a sweet potato asks did ernie ever find his significant other he was with jay finch for about four minutes so i am curious um this doesn't answer that question but puffs three does have a very ernie heavy plot uh for you all out there but uh steve do you got any fan theories no cool <laughs> <laughs> To spoil anything. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh, like Aaron gets introduced here, and then he has a bigger thing in this bit. Yeah. Let's just say that er Ernie's Ernie's journey is not what you expect. Um, journey, if you will. Er oh. <laughs> oh. Boo. 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 I'll see myself. Bye. Boo. Boo. This has been very nice. It's been I'm here. stuck. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay, I love this. This is a good question. So we can go down the line. What is everyone's favorite Zach Smith monologue? Um, let's start Ooh, with Zach. Well, I think Zach's in the corner now. Wait. Yes, Zach. <laughs> Am I? Okay. Yes. Um, I think the first one that I'm, I've said this before. I think the first one that made me actually like, like, not know what to do, and I was totally flabbergasted, was when they brought out a, a fake heart and said, "Hey, I found this." Cedric's, do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> also one of my favorite. Uh, Andy. Um, I loved everything that Nick Carrillo did, but also Alex Haynes uh, played Jay Finch uh, after Nick left the show. 
and he started doing bits where he he ordered Domino's pizza and just made us eat pizza on stage. And then there was one show where he made us eat like donuts on stage. And any show where I was like, well, I gotta eat all these carbs for the show was great. Uh, Nick, what was your favorite that you ever did? Oh, come back to me. Oh, sorry. Uh, Steve, uh, I'm sorry, Maddie. Maddie, you're actually next. Jennifer Bucket. <laughs> Jennifer yeah. Bucket. Do you, want, do you want me to explain? Or? There were buckets on the stage. Steve! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my Jennifer one was Bucket. really dark. It's the one where, you, Nick, you had said, you were like, oh, I, I, I saw my greatest fear. It was my brother, and he killed my parents, and then you took off your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you sat there in silence for about 15 seconds. <laughs> and then you got back up, I think, is just one of the things that will stay with me until the end of my days. I have Great. no memory of that. Jesse! Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I'm going to go with 27 Dresses. That's a classic. That's a good one. Was- for the film. Langston! Selfishly, it's one of my last show when me and Nick finally got to improvise together and do a Zach Smith. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Oliver Rivers showed up in that scene, and it was great. Um, uh, AJ. Uh, I uh, I think this is this is a weird one, um, but uh, grave robbing Zach Smith is probably my favorite. But my second favorite is parkour. <laughs> yeah. Just well, because we were doing filming, I was so deliriously tired. I've never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> Ellie. I really enjoyed, I mean, a- apart from the classics that have already been covered, then Zach Smith. Anytime <laughs> Nick got everyone to get really, like, he'd get everyone to calm down and, like, really focus on themselves for a minute and, like, feel the ground. It was great. It was nice. Julie! Um, I distinctly remember toward the end of our run at the Electra Theater before we went to New World Stages uh, that we had these foam birds in the show where, you know, you crumple it up and then bird. Uh, Nick put that in his crotch and then like unzipped his fly and the That's bird right. came out. Um, I don't even remember what else was t- like it's something with a spell that like it turned his you know into a bird. Uh, that's what I remember. <laughs> God. Uh, James. That's too many. That's too many. Um, <laughs> thinking about all, one that has stayed with me just like for an image. I think it was related to parkour. But it was one where he was doing like exercises of some kind, or going down to the ground and coming back up, and he stayed down and couldn't get up. And <laughs> was it Capi- sound- Capoeira? Was it Capoeira? Maybe yeah. yeah. the Capoeira so he was one. Crying yeah. out for help to get up after the way Zach Smith en- entered, like that still will go in my mind. If I hear someone say "help me," sometimes I hear it in Nick's voice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Nick, do you have a favorite Zach Smith? Um, they're all my favorites. Great. They're all my children. Um, that... The only thing I, I, I loved, I loved being on stage with all of you. Oh, um, a quick answer to Jamie Lynch's question. So what inspired to make Zach Smith's scenes and improv uh, is Nick. Nick is a very talented improviser and it originally started as a single line that he said that he was like, Oh, I'll make something up. And it was a one line joke. And then it became two jokes and it became three. How long and then it the became Zach Smith. The last one you can find on Instagram TV, and it was about 30 minutes. But that was some, somewhat my fault. Um, <laughs> Going to run through this real quick. Going Dark Productions has been shouted out. Woo. Bishop Woo. Waterson That's High School has been shouted out. Woo. O'Fallon Woo. Township High School has been shouted out. Woo. And What's going on over there? Why are you guys all so far away from each other? <laughs> um, and... I, there was one more, but I, I don't know how this works. Okay, I think there's so many wonderful questions. I do believe that we all need to call it a night. Um, but sincerely, thank you all so much for watching. We'll be back next week. We'll answer more questions. If we didn't get to you this time, we will happily do it now. You can also always reach out to us uh, on a, a, any of the social medias, and we'll figure out a way to answer you uh, in some capacity. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for caring about Puffs. Thanks for liking Puffs enough to sit through uh, this weird web readings in this weird time that we live in um, from all of us in the many boxes surrounding me. Uh, we hope you all stay safe. Um, sincerely, thank you all to those who donated and who watched. Uh, this will be so appreciated. by This is going to help so many healthcare workers. It's going to help so many restaurants who are struggling in our area that many people in Queens love. It's very specifically for six of us who these restaurants get to stay open for, but also uh, many other people. Um, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for if there will be more. Um, and please have a good night. And with that, we all say bye. 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 And there goes Goose. <laughs> oh.